Good evening and welcome to The Real Study. With your hosts, Mr. Snippets. I don't have a problem with him, but I don't think he's that in a bag of chips. Black Girl Marvel. I cried laughing. That was hilarious. Tyler Makes Films. That was like our favorite movie for some reason. I mean, it was really good. I enjoyed that movie. All the movie things. I think the thing I, I why I enjoyed it more too was the fact that we were going to talk about it from this perspective. The pre-review with Blind Biggie. Hey, this is Blind Biggie. Welcome to the pre-review. And me, the real study movie voice guy. I'm the real study movie voice guy. Let's go to the poster wall. Good evening, and I am Mr. Snippets, and welcome to The Real Study. With me tonight, we've got Mr. Uh, not Mr. Mr. Marvel. It is, of course, here. I'm already going to mess this up. Uh, we've got cell phone, wallet, and keys. I'm so used to it being Black Girl Marvel. We've got uh, Tyler Makes Films, and then, of course, all the movie things. And tonight, we do have our uh, returning guest, Mr. Marvelite. He is a former host of The Real Study and back to talk comic book movies. Whenever the comic book movies come up, he is an automatic shoe in as a guest and tonight we will be discussing howard the duck which was a mr marvelite uh, request about a year ago so we do get to your movies eventually uh the losers uh which is uh, kind of an off the wall comic book movie and then black adam which was uh, released digitally not that long ago and we will be discussing all three uh, arguably next... the best of the three <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you really you really could have, you really could have started this off saying the losers howard the duck and black adam <laughs> That's true. And it would have made true. perfect sense. That's true. Uh, next week, we will be doing uh, all foodie uh, movies. So we'll be doing The Menu, Burnt, and The Chef, or Chef. Uh, and with that said, we'll uh, get into that later, of course. Um, tonight, uh, we'll also have a, a pre-review from Blind Biggie. But uh, without Black Girl Marvel here, I will go into her normal spiel, which is don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms. We should be on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, which is, of course, where we are right now. Uh, and then um, Facebook, you know, all of the normal ones. And then, of course, there's the Discord. Uh, you can come over and visit with us there where you can actually talk to each of us individually, talk movies, request films, which we love to hear what your requests are. But all that said, we're going to move over to the main screen and say hello to everyone. How has your guys' week been? Very busy. Oh. Busy, busy, good. I yeah. can't Better. complain. I can't yeah. complain at all. Good, good. Can't complain. Busy. Those are both good things. Keeping busy, you know, <laughs> isn't a bad thing. Uh, let's get right into this because there are five of us. There will be plenty to say. Um, Mr. Marvelite, welcome back and tell us what have you been up to on social media? How is your TikTok going? And why did you pick Howard the Duck? Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm doing great. I've uh, been busy with, uh, with Nerd Initiative. Um, we just actually had our second streaming show um, air on Friday night, uh, The Comic Press. So now we have two shows, one happening every Friday night now. Um, we have fandoms that'll happen this week um, coming, and then um, The Comic Press uh, podcast, which is very much specialized around comic books, comic collecting. Um, they had a really interesting discussion about um, uh, heritage auctions and the trend of like expensive comic books. Um, so that was really mm -hmm. cool, uh, just to kind of watch. And then uh, we got a bunch of other stuff coming up the, down the road with a we're, with a lot of us going to C two E two. So that's been been really kind of like taking up a lot of my time. Uh, the social media has been good. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think everybody's been feeling the uh, the the what is it the plague of the algorithm just wanting to slow everybody down. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, but it's definitely it's definitely been visible. But you know, um, I at least I'm not losing followers anymore. Uh, yeah. it, you know, you, it, the, the bots disappear. But otherwise, yeah. it's been good. You know, uh, between doing social media and then doing um their initiative, that's been keeping me busy all the time. Uh, but for Howard the Duck, uh, I'm always reading new things and one of the things that i picked up at a bargain outlet you know i i, I got the really expensive the the history of or the, the story of marvel studios mm -hmm. um in the back here um but i actually picked up this really cheap book at a bargain outlet and it goes from timely comics or from like timely publishing and stuff to 
um, basically the bankruptcy in the 90s. And it has a really interesting um, excerpt in there about Howard the Duck. And if you haven't watched Mickey's video on the Did You Know About It, it covers a little bit of that. Um, and it just got me really interested in what was going on. I wanted to talk about it. So, yeah. Awesome. I love it. All the movie things. Um, you're back after a few weeks, and it's glad to see you back. And I want to know. Yeah, thanks. You're from the same era. Well, we most of us are from the era of Howard the Duck. Yeah. Uh, tell me mm -hmm. what you thought of it maybe first time around, and, and did you get to rewatch it, and what did you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So I saw this one like a long time ago. I've only seen it once when I was a kid. I didn't like it then. <laughs> I didn't like it this time around either. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was, man, it just, I mean, there, there's, it, it's just amazing that it got made really. I mean, it's just, it's <laughs> because it has George Lucas behind it, I guess. But I will say some of the effects were, you know, surprising. Um, I don't remember a lot of that. I, 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 and, and like the, the duck outfit and the animatronics and stuff are still, you know, I, I think that stuff's still pretty good, but just like storyline and dialogue and some other, oh, some ducky. other questionable things in there, like, <laughs> like ducks that aren't anatomically correct. Let's just say it put that way. <laughs> the, you're talking, are we talking about Nibgate here? Oh man, Nibgate. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the the play duck, and then right away the woman in the you know the duck right, in the exactly. bath. You're like, oh um, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, they stopped there because like he doesn't right. wear anything on his bottom, so we wouldn't have wanted to go there. No. Yeah, he doesn't Donald Duck it. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. So Tyler, had you and, ever seen this film yeah. before? <laughs> Uh, no, but funny story, um, as a kid, I used to tell people I watched it because I thought it was like, I'm cool, like, this is an indie movie, the indie superhero movie. <laughs> um, but no, it was yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was the first time, like, I, um, I thought I was going to be into it the first, like, 10 minutes. I was like, all right, it's establishing what kind of movie it's going to be. I'm down. Um, right doesn't explain anything really um no. duck tub nips was like for a second i was like okay someone greenlit that i don't know how many, <laughs> I know. And how many PG -13, so, yeah. you know. um i yeah i mean as the movie went on i was like man this is like this is not good and then i realized the the last 40 minutes is like one big action sequence that doesn't end yeah it's yeah. crazy i was like wow this is just like i didn't i didn't even know where i was half the time Give or take, I was enhanced to watch because I needed to be enhanced for this movie, <laughs> of course. Um, but mm -hmm. I mean, there was there was there was bits that were enjoyable, but not enough of it for me to like like this movie. <laughs> right. But, All right. Yeah, that's how I felt. That's fair. How about you, cell phone, wallet, keys? Uh, so when this came out and I was young, I adored it. Like it was something I watched on the regular. I guess it just came along at the right time and hit me just right. Um, yeah, I would always enjoy it. I, I don't know exactly what it was, probably the music and like, I know, I know what it really was. I really, all, and even when I rewatched it again, I really enjoy the whole Jennings, like makeup effects. Like that's probably like one of my favorite parts of the movie is him transforming over that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, a lot of the special effects associated with him were really good for yeah. that time anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. And the makeup effects still hold up today, I think. But um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, you're, you're rewatching it at an older age, which I've I've rewatched it several times since then. But it's probably been a few years before I watched it for this show. And I was like, yeah, I forgot how ridiculous some of this stuff was, like Howard Duck flying through space without a, any kind of protection, just <laughs> floating through the the vacuum of space without a spacesuit or anything. And then, yeah, like Tyler was saying, I, I forgot how long that chase sequence was. I, I was like, man, is this ever going to yeah. end? Like, I don't remember <laughs> it being this long. Like, it felt longer than usual. But, uh, you know, overall, I, I still love it. I, it's, I, it's probably got a lot of nostalgia related to it, but I still love it. For sure. I'm kind of in the same boat as Mickey. I watched it a lot as a kid. Plus, it had George Lucas's name on it. So it's like, oh, Star Wars, you know, that guy must be, mm -hmm. must mm -hmm. be great, right? Because it's Star Wars. Um, but it I, watching these three movies together, I noticed there was more sexual tension between 
uh, her and the duck than there was between Zoe Saldana and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, which really <laughs> kind of freaked me out. I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, but yeah. yeah, lots of sexual tension in a movie that shouldn't have any... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lots of questionable things. And again, I mean, it's Howard the Duck. So if you've read Howard the Duck comics from the, you know, the seventies, then you expect some lewdness, you know, but it, the if lewdness you were a young kid, weird. this movie confused you. Right. Yeah. Um, you didn't know what yeah. was going on yeah. back then. Well, like, like, just awesome. I, think, I think that's why a lot of, a lot of the guys from like our age, like Mickey and I like grew up to be freaks. Like there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> blame and Howard mm-hmm. the Duck. Um, this is like pre you know You're right. No, that makes sense. There's several yeah. movies that did that to me. <laughs> oh, you know, the 80s, the 80s were loaded with movies we shouldn't have watched and yet saw anyway. No, um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that says a lot about it. This was these, the gateway to Jessica Rabbit and Space Jam. Oh, right. right. Honestly, Jessica Rabbit's kind of... <laughs> kind, well, of? kind of? It's, it's pretty horny. <laughs> it's, it's overly blatant, but yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's weird that it was... I guess it wouldn't <laughs> matter ultimately. We have plenty of other like Star Trek gets into interspecies stuff and it's not a big deal, but yet in this True. movie Doctor we who. it's weird. We don't like it. I don't like it. I didn't it was like please stop. <laughs> um but they don't go there. They just insinuate that they're gonna go there. Hmm. So I don't know. You 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 expect when you get steamy with a duck you're gonna have dinner. You don't expect to have like <laughs> dessert. Wow. Now that's something I did notice this time around. They wouldn't stop putting duck somewhere in the movie. Like it's <laughs> yeah, literally every yeah. time, and I'm just like, wow, I've never walked past a TV, you know, and seen a bunch of duck hunters. Like you just like all the things they kind of <laughs> added in there were like mm-hmm. for Howard's sake, I guess, you know. Um, and then he gets his revenge on them weirdly for some reason. Yeah. So, but this movie's loaded with those kinds of just odd little throwbacks or tropes. For seemingly no reason, but I think this movie is shows George Lucas's ability as a director far more than Star Wars does. Uh, I, I think we get a real idea of just kind of why he's only got a handful of films under his belt as a director. Um, yeah, I'm knocking him. Sorry, it's what I do. <laughs> so, uh, how do you think this fits into the modern MCU? Because it's technically Marvel, and we know all universes exist. So. Um, how about you, Mr. Marvel? I imagine there's got to be there's got to be there's got to be a universe in the multiverse where Marvel characters suck. And this would be one of them. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Like, <laughs> this is this is not Howard the Duck. Now, I am not a guru when it comes to Howard the Duck. But there's a couple things that I know about Howard the Duck. He's very self-aware and he's always the coolest. I'm, I'm going to say it. He's going to be the coolest bird in the in the in the room. Like, even if he doesn't like it, like we've seen him in the MCU. Even in the most mm-hmm. awkward positions, he's always been cold, calm, and collected, and just kind of like, "Hey, you know, you know, that's how yeah. he is." The th- this Howard the Duck in this was nothing like the comics. He's like full was of anxiety. Nothing like full of anxiety. <clears throat> can't handle himself. Doesn't have control <clears throat> of himself. And see, yeah. this is where it comes down to New World, who created this. Um, and I, I was telling you guys this offline. Um, Lucas wanted to make this an animated film, and New World coming off of you know Return of the Jedi. They wanted him to do a full live action, you know, and whatever. But New World did not take comic books seriously. When New World purchased Marvel Entertainment or Marvel Comics at the time, they didn't do anything. They didn't break any ground. And it was Stanley pushing. And so, of course, when when George Lucas, like, basically pays, like, I think it was, like, 20 to $30 million to do this film... And they ultimately it was like thirty thirty seven point nine million, I think, to make it. And then they put eight million dollars in the marketing, and they just didn't care. It was obviously going to be a flop. Mm-hmm. So in the multiverse, I imagine this this would be the same thing as like the 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 early like Avengers style, like Captain America movie, everything where they or like even the David Hasselhoff like Nick Fury. This is yeah. better than All those. The yeah. just suck. This is better than those. Core. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, they the suck. Corman this this sucks a little less. I don't know. Well, this is the time where th- this this movie quintessentially made a lot of people who didn't read the comics when when Howard the Duck appeared in Guardians of the Galaxy. They go, "Wait, he's a Marvel character." Yeah, because no one would have thought. No one would have thought this was a Marvel comics property if they didn't read the comics. So, so maybe maybe the question is, did Blade or any other Marvel property get kind of shelved because of this and those other couple of films? This movie technically made money, mm-hmm. technically, uh, worldwide grossed. Uh, it, it 
well, it broke its budget. So if it had any kind of mm. marketing, then it's no, it still lost money. yeah, so. eight, eight million dollars. It, it, it okay, hold on, let me, let no, me, no, you're good. I think it only it, made it, 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 it made, made, like it made 37 million nine hundred thousand worldwide, but with a budget of 37 million. But I assume that's not including marketing as it usually doesn't. So it still lost money, but it, it, uh, there's some cult following there uh, to get that kind of those numbers. I don't yeah. think that's a nothing number. There are horror movies that would dream for 37 million. So um, <laughs> just saying. Um, yeah. So structurally, we agree the script on this movie is pretty rough, really rough. Um, do you think it says anything about the eighties? Cause I think it very much feels like oh, yeah. it just literally oh got God. plucked. You know, it was right just, out of the 80s. yeah. Yeah. Paint yeah. painted with that eighties brush all the way through. Yeah. I mean, Leah Thompson is like all eighties. Mm-hmm. Like she's right. is just wearing everything eighties and yeah. I feel like the I feel like too and... a lot of eighties stuff too for some reason involved like a band or someone being in the band. And like she of course was in this band. And um yeah, she I mean she's she's screaming eighties for sure. I think that's what was and, taking me out of the movie a little bit. I was like extra critical because right. I was like, this is back to the future. They just it's basically <laughs> back to the future. They just took exactly. it and put yeah. it in the movie. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm remembering, I'm trying to remember, did Howard, like, start fading away at any point? Because I'm pretty sure... Nobody was given a red not. guitar and got to dance around on stage yeah. towards the end <laughs> yeah. of the film, so... Like, he did dance at the end, like, yeah. the Howard the Duck theme song, like, yeah. come on. Yeah. That so, was, yeah, I mean, that was know. worse than, like, uh, what was it, MC Hammer or doing the uh, Addams Family. What <laughs> I what I want to know is, how did her band get popular oh. just because she helped save the world? Like, she didn't get better, right? She was still going to play those cage bars, because, you know? It's because Howard was a really good manager. You remember they oh, they dumped the yeah. Yeah, that's right. they dumped oh, the yeah. bomb, he, right? He he fit the bill. Oh. I'm dead. <laughs> oh, you're gonna outdo Tyler. That's not gonna, that's not gonna go over well. Let's, Tyler's about uh, to but, go but it's fine. It's screen. fine because for this episode, I don't give a duck. So, oh, oh, <laughs> give me up, man. Oh wow! Well, I can't even. I, if I had the j- jokes thing, I couldn't keep up with those. So. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna move on now. Uh, Sorry, it's all fluff. <laughs> oh lord. Um, yeah. Oh, at least it didn't I, say anything foul. You know, you guys are getting me really down. <laughs> you know. Anyway. Listen, I didn't even plan that. I just winged it. Oh lord. Okay. <laughs> so on the next episode of Puns uh, Forever, apparently. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> so, oh, I do want to say something about structure. What? Well, well, please, one thing. please. I mean, we we, I, we could know. tear this film all the way down because that's kind of what most people do, or we could try to build it up if we want. Go ahead. There's certain bits, like again, like there were certain bits that I liked. I did like the whole setup at the, like the payoff at the end where he's like, "Oh, you know, he could go back to his own world, but yeah. you know, to save the yeah. planet, he has to." Just, like, there's little tidbits like that that I'm like. I could see someone like James Gunn if he were to direct a movie like this and like restructure the story, it mm-hmm. could work. Because I like moments like that. It just didn't pay off for me at the end because the, the right. rest of the movie was so bad. <laughs> like, yeah, and they didn't story. really like build it up to that either. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, I didn't know that was the stakes up until yeah. it was. Oh, but yeah, exactly. Isn't yeah. this the way of '80s films in a way? They're either top caliber or they're this and like the Ewok movies. Like this fits right <laughs> yeah. with the Ewok movies really nicely. Where it's like fun mm. and nostalgic crap. It should have never happened. Well, no, I'm glad it happened. We wouldn't have them to kind of look back <laughs> on and go, oh, oh, those two Ewok movies, how cute. And <laughs> never watch them because you want to yeah. remember them better than you want to watch them. So You know, I, like these movies have like strengthened a lot of bonds with people. Like these really bad 80s movies that we all have like a collective experience of, you know, watching at a young age. Like for a lot of those movies have like, grown some really strong relationships for me so that's a good point yeah yeah well and they uh, there weren't as many movies then so these movies kind of helped fill in the void uh so they kind of kept the movie flow going in a way i mean nowadays there's five seven ten twelve movies a weekend i swear uh whether it be (laughs) streaming or theater or you know there used to be a pattern like they bring them out on friday nights and tuesdays now it's it's wild west out there on when they'll release a film so I don't this know. Is there's kind of there's, like there's, how there's they... a nostalgia to it. I do I do see that and I do love it, but watching it, it does hurt. <laughs> this is this is kind of like how they allow for what you say cult followings. Um, you know, it's it th- there is a there is a following for this, um, for this movie. Like there are people who still like mm-hmm. love it and 
you know advocate for it and they you know you know they're going to complain when howard if the howard the duck ever gets a, a feature film in the mcu yeah. um but why is it's funny because I, 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 yeah, <laughs> but it's like it's like you think about bad movies back then even then at the time they were necessarily enjoyable just not marketable now we have movies that people make that are like hyped up to be something bigger than they are not talking about anything we're going to be reviewing and i don't but I'm saying, like, you know, there are movies like, like the adaptation, like Aragon, like um, from the from the Aragon, like the uh, th- yeah. that's a terrible adaptation. It's worse than what you would think of for Ready Player One snippets. Um, no, I've heard, I've I've heard fans that have. Just it's been like, like oh. it's like there are just things that like like I and it, 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 we're 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 at a point where it's like everybody thinks that something's going to be marketable and they will market it in a way that it's really enjoyable until you watch it and and I mm. feel like even. Even back then, with it being a bad film, there were people that still enjoyed it as much, you know, more than what you'll find like in modern movies that are just crap, just crap. That's fair. Yeah, true. Well, that's the weird thing about this movie because I thought it, it would, it should be the perfect thing to like. Let's sell some toys on this and all that, but mm-hmm. like because oh, yeah. they had inserted mm-hmm. weird other yeah. things in it, it's like it made it oh. not marketable. Like, yeah, it's PG thirteen, so mm-hmm. it's definitely wasn't aimed at toys. Um, yeah, yeah. Weirdly enough. You know, I, maybe this is why I never had a problem with what George Clooney's Batman costume having nipples because we were already we, we already had our, the we're precedent was right. set with the, the <laughs> with the foul nipples. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Hmm. So they should just remake this movie shot for shot, but digitally with the new Howard the Duck. That's what they should do. <laughs> right, but just don't give George don't Lucas so. the original film because he will ruin. Right. <laughs> might I will never get it, to yeah. see the old the OG yeah. ever. Again. Howard quacked first. Oh wow. No. <laughs> right. Um Tim Robbins as a young actor in this film. Um I, he was goofy compared to anything he Not normally good. does. Yeah, no, like yeah. this was weird. <laughs> no. uh, Forgettable. For him. Almost I totally completely. He was in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then of course we've got Jeffrey Jones. We can skip him uh if necessary yeah um and then um, i was gonna say too he's like in every i mean it, he like owned the 80s like he did this. i mean he's all he's <laughs> in a lot of movies i love which is terrible i love yeah. ferris bueller's i love beetlejuice yeah. beetlejuice just like yeah. wait what is oh i guess well tell me after the show maybe is this some... <laughs> oh just it's, a, it's uh, another polanski situation yeah. oh. google him <laughs> is all you have to do and <laughs> yeah. you will find everything you need well, i'm to good know. you mentioned i'm glad you mentioned polanski because like that was i missed last week and that was the thing about chinatown that's like yeah it has like yeah but <laughs> well, here, has in a minute, a bad, here in yeah. a minute i would love to hear what you think about those three movies because they were your films and we want to at least hear i know that yeah uh, that Mar- mickey and tyler both agree that we were both like oh we really wanted to hear what you said so as soon as we're done with howard just oh, yeah. to give you two yeah. minutes to to sum them up but we Real did brief. cover polanski uh because we're not going to stray yeah. away from it but we're not yeah, going to highlight good. these people either yeah exactly right. yeah um yep. hmm, yeah this movie is pretty forgettable it's not there's not a lot to uh to right. cling to unless you guys can think of anything else um just it's, just leah uh, thompson that's it yeah ex- i was just gonna say that yeah <laughs> I think she's really the one that kind of holds it all together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she does make yeah. it believable that she's talking to a duck um, rather than a yeah. dude in a suit. So she tries her yeah, damn but... like the entire movie. Oh, yeah. 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 She's, she's putting it in there, man. She's putting in the work. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, she made it as steamy as it was with that duck. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I do like, the, and this is where it does feel like it was supposed to be an animated movie, but there's moments where they both, you know, have the same gesture or they both like copy each other. And you can tell they're like friend soulmates, I guess. I, you know, I guess mm-hmm. maybe more. I don't know. I feel like there's a picket fence involved with them, but I don't really want to go any <laughs> further with that. Um, but you're right. Yeah, she does a she does a fantastic job um, for just being a kind of a cheesy '80s comedy. What more could you do with mm-hmm. that role uh, other than just yeah dive right, right in? So. Yeah. And who plays Howard? Ed Gale. Oh wait, there's yeah. a, there's so Ed Gale. Well, actually, there was like eight was uh, performers say. in the suit, but Ed Bell right. Ed Gale was like the main one. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. there's Ed Gale, Tim Rose. Um, Tim Rose was Admiral. Ackbar, Lisa Stern was like. the voice. It looks like the voice was uh, Zian, Tim Zian. I think is what Timothy oh, okay. Zian. Chip Zian. Chip Zian. 
originally universe. Robin Williams, if you guys remember from the video. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Was, but it makes cool. a lot of sense that he would have been better. So like so when they were using well, here's the problem. So when they were using you know, Howard was the face was animatronic puppet, right? Yeah, so he had a match. The guy operating it off screen is, you know, saying the words while they're filming. Right. You know, saying the lines and moving the mouth as he mm -hmm. says them. And Robin Williams, like, got in the booth and was just like, I can't do this. Like, because when you do, like, ADR looping or, like, you're trying That's to match. It's ADR, yeah. It's, it, oh. it, for some people, it can be really, really hard, like, to get the, yeah. especially him, man, because he just has his Robin's own style. All over the place. And it's hard to just match a uh, timing. It's probably really boring to him. He, so he was just like. Yeah, oh. he didn't have any room, really, yeah. to, like, play and, like try different things like he had to kind of stick to it's not the, yeah. it's not like when he did the genie where they did his voice and then matched the genie to him it's the yeah. like opposite and then they animate right. to him right. yeah right yeah that makes sense right it just didn't fit the bill for him you know exactly yeah yeah it was... why didn't i have my jokes thing ready for the night uh, that's the question <laughs> i should have had it ready uh, the whole uh, show would have been jokes things um anyway uh yeah so we can go ahead and rate this because I do want to hear what uh, all the movie things has to say about these three other films. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't normally push to hear about three completely other films on a episode, but uh, it's kind of a special one. So uh, let's go ahead and just do this in the same order. Mr. Marvelite, what do you rate Howard the Duck? Man, okay. Are we still doing the childhood and then we're doing the uh, the now? Or? We haven't done the childhood in a while, but the movies we've been watching for the yeah. last this, month this or two one, have I feel, been I feel pretty, like we, yeah. We can do it on these. For sure. Okay. So for this one, I would I, I'm I'm gonna go back because I mean like childhood me I remember I I felt found myself pretty fond of it. Um, wasn't the best film like it, I don't know what it was. It was like it, if it was like even like the the regular cable channels you were watching this and Enemy Mine and the Police Academy films over and over and over <laughs> again, and yeah. and like. So, so like I, I prefer this and Enemy Mine over Police Academy after a while, because there's only so many times you can see the bar scene that you like really enjoy it. Um, and so, so it was, it was probably about a five or a six for me as a kid. Um, it was memorable enough to enjoy it a bit, but not like something that I would be like, hey, let's go rent this. As a kid, I, I, yeah. I, I rented Aliens. I rented this almost Just... every other week. Like I. <laughs> Like, like Ellen Ripley was my, my crush. Like I, like she was awesome. And, and, but Howard the Duck, like there's not a lot memorable in it. A lot of gross factor in some cases. Um, so yeah, five or six. And like now watching it, it's like a three. Um, you know, I say, if you haven't watched it, watch it. Especially if you're a Marvel fan, just so you can say you endured it for that sake. But of course I'm the same guy who watched the Nick, the, uh, David Hasselhoff, Nick Fury, because I felt like I had to, and I wanted yeah. to gouge my eyeballs out. So <laughs> I'd rather just read a little snippet and watch a YouTube like about it, and I'd be mm, good. Yeah, a little snippet, a little snippet. Mm -hmm. Point, point made, point made. Uh, how about you, all the movie things? What did you think of Howard the Duck? Yeah, it's that's probably a five for me. Yeah, it was like this is definitely like you know, kind of put on in the background kind of thing, you know, um, it's not like drawing me in kind of thing. And I think I probably, even when I was a kid, I probably would have gave us like a five or a six. Cause you only and watched so, it the once you didn't go back for it. Yeah. I only watched it the one time, but, but the thing was too, though, like to, to its credit, it still stuck with me though. Like I always remembered Howard the Duck was like this thing, you know what I mean? All throughout, <laughs> yeah. you know, my movie going, you know, experience, I always remember like, oh yeah, there's this freaking ridiculous Howard the Duck <laughs> movie with <laughs> Leah Thompson. Uh, yeah. But right. other than that, I didn't remember any like details about the film, but yeah. So re now? rewatching it was just like, man, I don't remember any of this. So, right. How about now? What's that? You said five for when you were a kid. How about now? What would you rate it? Now? Oh, so and it would five? be five now. Five. Too. So yeah, it hasn't yeah. changed. Okay. Just want yeah, to make yeah, sure. Yeah. It's <laughs> yep. flatline. How about you, Tyler? Totally. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm the same. I'm, I'm a five now because I'm just so on the wall of whether or not it's like, because it is a good movie, but it's also not a good movie. And you're kind of just going back and forth constantly. So it's like, what did pretend you rate it? Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> pretend me. Oh, okay. So I was just, I was just looking up because I grew up with a lot of like I'm from the '90s, but I grew up with a lot of like Labyrinth and Dark Crystal and all of those mm. movies and Jim Henson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, yes. I feel like I would be like, yeah, it's a seven. I'm having fun. It's there's a little scary mm-hmm. part, you know, with the. <laughs> I mean, he's actually scary now. Now that, <laughs> yeah, right. And Mickey, also the the tiniest condom you've ever seen. Oh, yeah. oh, Howard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was out of that. the wrapper. What was that? It yeah. was out yeah. of the wrapper. Know. Like what? Is that? Yeah. It's... So was it used? Did it bust open? <laughs> no, they use a different it's it's just just like material. I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. How about you, Mickey? What do you think of Howard the Duck yeah. this time around? I'm going to be the outlier here. When I was a kid, I would have gave this 10 out of 10 because I probably watched it over and over and over again. Um, I love that. It was just kind of in the rotation, you know, totally yeah. rented it. Like you said, also rented it. Um, now watching it, you know, we'll go ahead and cut that in half and give it a five. I, I'll give it a six because I still have a crush on uh, Leah Thompson. So That's yeah. fair. There you go. That's fair. Uh, for me as a kid, I would have given this an eight. I would have been like, "Oh, that's how you make a movie." You know, that's I would have. <laughs> yeah. That's how I would have been as a kid because I had no idea. I didn't understand. Oh man! You know, and it took years of me like understanding. Mother, you know? huh? yeah. I think I think Brian fun. was born to know movies because he understood. You know, he knew. He saw as a kid. He was like, "What is this shit?" Right. Uh, <laughs> while while I was sitting there going, "Academy yeah. Award," you know, not quite. But, um, I was still, but I was enamored by George Lucas and Star Wars. It was a big part of my early life. Yeah. So. Um, and that, you know, the duck reminds me of the turtles in a lot of ways. Like he looks in a lot of ways mm. as quality as the turtles. They could be in the same universe because of the quality of the suits. Um, yeah, I can see that. Not yeah. with the sexual innuendo, uh, but whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now it's bad. Like, I don't want to give it less than a five <laughs> only because I do appreciate some of the things about the film. I do appreciate uh-huh. the special effects. Uh, there was a you know a, a Ghostbustery kind of feel to some of those effects, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I and I really enjoyed that. I loved the giant overlord demons that came from a realm in the you know the universe for yes. no reason, just because oh. there was a realm of demons <laughs> and they were weird crab looking <laughs> creatures. Sure, I don't mind that like you know old style uh, special effects. Um, so none of that bothered me, but it's a choppy film. It has a lot of problems and. Yeah, it's a five. It earned its it's a, five. Yeah. it's a five. It did. Oh, yeah. um, and it gets a four seven on IMDb if that gives you any idea that everybody kind of agrees yeah. with most of the panel. Um, I just realized the ending of Howard the Duck is kind of the ending of Black <laughs> <laughs> For good reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that said, uh, we're going to say the selections for this week are inspired. I just it's all coming it. together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if you couldn't give a, a third bad film, you at least called it the losers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I thought we should at least have a film that we would want to talk about that is fun. And, and, and we, I think it got brought up once before, but anyway, Brian, I really want to hear what you thought about um, the three films that you suggested for last week, all Jack Nicholson, all Robert town uh, yeah. screenplays. And you've got, uh, the uh the last detail chinatown yeah. and the two jakes go ahead tell us what two you jakes thought. yeah um <clears throat> so it's funny so i never saw the two jakes um so that was my first time seeing it but i've seen chinatown multiple times i've seen the last uh detail multiple times i mean it's like literally right here i mean oh. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, I, I like there's so much to the last. De- I mean, obviously, like, you know, I was in the Navy for 10 years myself. So there's a lot in there that's like very Robert Town, like did his research, obviously, because there's a lot of like little things in there. Where I was like, oh, my God, I used to say that in the Navy or like I've heard <laughs> that in the Navy. And like and like even down to like his rating badges, like he was a signalman. And he didn't say it right away. Like, you didn't know he's a signalman until like he started like teaching you know, Randy Quaid's character about signals and stuff like that. But the whole time on his dress blues, he had that, that rating of the signalman. Um, and, uh, the other gentleman, um, was a, uh, just for, to let you know, he was a gunner's mate. That was, he had like two cross cannons was his rate, but, um, Are you talking about mule? I dig- yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, he was a gunner's mate. Um, but the th- I didn't know what the hell Randy Quaid was wearing though. <laughs> he's he just had like this all black outfit on. I was like, shouldn't he have dress blues too? But not if he was on his um, way, they might have taken him away. 
yeah i don't know it was really weird but but it's it's just like it's a really great film i actually have a book too um by robert town that's called um two screenplays and it's the last detail and chinatown and so you have the both screenplays in one book there and i think both of these films are are like they're, they're considered like textbook screenplays especially chinatown like it just follows like script and screenplay structure so well you know it's got all the beats where where they need to be it just like really feels you know smooth and like all the way through the thing i like about the last detail too is like it's a very simple kind of story like it's just it's like a road trip kind of movie and you're just following along these guys that you know it's these old timers who they've called themselves lifers too and they've kind of like you know they want to show this kid one last good time kind of thing and and um it's kind of like a coming of age story in a way too so it's it's just it's something i've always always liked those then are Chinatown similar notes was just, that we said yeah that there's a kind of a funny oh, comedy yeah, yeah. aspect nice. of coming of age yeah um absolutely yeah yeah and jack Nicholson is like just really great in it i mean he's kind of unhinged in parts <laughs> um but and then we, we, and that, that's why it was interesting to choose these three films because like they're we get to see the story and like how it's written and how it's structured each film because they're all written by the same screenwriter and then we get to see jack nicholson kind of portray different levels you know because like he's kind of off the walls in the last detail and then we see him in chinatown is very methodical and like you know um has a lot of charm and, char- and charisma and um i love the the era too that that it's set in it's just and, and faye dunaway i mean i think she was nominated for an academy award for that as well um yeah and there's the whole i'm so glad you guys mentioned the roman polanski thing because that was one of the things i was going to mention was like it has this like kind of scar on it because of him you know it's like this all-time great film i mean it's like in afi's top 100 for sure and um one of the greatest screenplays of all time and Roman Polanski just like his damn names on there. And he's in the movie too. Like he has that, that little role there. Um, but the cinematography is really great. I love the cinematography in Chinatown too. I thought it was really well done. Um, and then, uh, and then the two Jakes was interesting. Cause it was like, it did not, man, it was so weird. Like it didn't hold up for me. Like I was just like, Oh, you go from Chinatown to this, and Jack Nicholson directed it too, which I didn't even know until I watched the movie. And I, I don't like, think damn. he directed another thing. I, after I was just, yeah, movie. I don't think he directed another movie after that. And for good reason. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's probably part of it, you know, because like I think there was some focus lost there, you know, where he, yeah, he just didn't feel like Jake from Chinatown in a lot of ways. I was just like, I know it's like a different time too, but. Yeah, it just, yeah, it wasn't. As but he good seemed as like somebody first. who may have been a ladies' man, but like was really serious right. about Faye Dunaway's character. And then in yeah. to Chu Jakes, he's just this like, oh yeah, I just sleep around and I'm yeah. kind of a dirty old man in a lot of ways. And yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it felt weird. So yeah, yeah, it just yeah, it was really, it was super interesting. So it was it was really interesting to see all three of those films and and the way we did. So I was like, so yeah, I appreciate you like jumping in on those 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 movies so of course of course the, the other thing too was like tom cruise has done three robert town movies and almost four that he was there's one that he wasn't in i'm pretty sure robert town did so he tom cruise produced i mean um snitty you probably know this being living in eugene yeah it was filmed here um, well filmed part yeah here. exactly yeah so there's a uh steve there's two steve prefontaine ones but Tom Cruise produced one. I think Robert Town wrote without the screenplay. Without limits is what that one's called. Uh, yeah, without limits. Yeah, yep. filmed and filmed here the at Hayward Field, and they wanted to film it here because that's, of course, where Prefontaine is from. Uh, I actually yeah. live at the base of the Prefontaine's like hill where he used to run the trail. So nice. like, li- literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am like awesome. a ten minute walk from the rock for yeah. Prefontaine. I was like a huge cool. Prefontaine fan. Like, yeah. If myself, you're a runner. So. You'd be really yeah. like, whoa, you snippets, know, sneer, the, holy crap, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not a runner, you're like, <laughs> yeah, I heard about a guy, Olympics, something, uh, you know. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, so. Anyway, thanks for letting me 
chat about that of stuff. Of course, so. we really yeah. did want to hear what you had to say. <laughs> I mean, they were your movies, and we definitely thought that the Navy thing was a big factor. Um, yeah. Swabby, that's a thing? Yeah. Uh-huh. Swabby. Okay. It's, it's a pretty general term, though. It's just like, you know, swabbing the deck, you know, and like a swab is just, just a mop. Okay. Basically just mopping. So yeah. a person that mops yeah. is a swabby? Yeah, it's not, a, it's not like an actual job. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> In the Navy, yeah. I was dying to ask one question about The Last Detail because I really liked that movie a lot. And yeah. it was the way Jack Nicholson rolled his hat. Is that something yeah. that was like pretty... That was something I was going to mention too. So if, like, if you look at all three of their hats, their white hats, they're all different styles of like how yeah. we would do that in the Navy. So how I would do mine, I would... I would like take so like the white cap, you know, there's that wide brim. I would fold that in half and then I just keep it like that. And I would just, and then it would just be flatter. And it's easier to like, you know, transfer. And like some guys, yeah, I rolled that up. Some guys would even like roll the very edge of it, you know, and get the like crisp kind of edge. Technically, you weren't supposed to like do any of that, <laughs> but <laughs> everyone had their own style. And so it was interesting, like each of those three sailors had. A different style of how they did their white hat yeah the concept of a uniform is to literally be that right so yeah when you change it you're kind of this kind of like school kids yeah. and they like wear their shirts open and even though they're wearing right. uniforms they still try to make an alteration to be individual well another thing too this is in the 70s so the navy and the military in general was very different post vietnam and like my dad was in the navy in the 70s and he literally like smoked weed when he was in the navy like it was <laughs> Man, so that's something a different. Time, so. I do want you to watch the episode yeah. because we covered my father being in the army, which you know we we could talk about the separations, yeah. but the the similarities no, totally. are still going to be there. Uh, my dad yeah. sold drugs in the military. Uh, yeah, I believe in, it. Yeah, in yeah. the seventies, <laughs> and it was a crazy you know, if he wasn't, time. If he yeah. wasn't dead already, I probably wouldn't have said that. But it's another time, <laughs> and it doesn't matter anymore. But yeah, yeah. he. You know, the, if you guys have ever seen Up in Smoke where they pack it all into televisions, yeah, that's the kind of shit yeah. they would pull back in the day. Oh, wow. And, of course, they didn't have yeah. dogs. They didn't have it the way we have it now, so they would, right. they would just get sent back to the States and some yeah. crazy stories. You guys should ask me off camera. We can talk about some crazy shit. Um, <laughs> that just makes me think about the fact that if you were caught as a criminal back in those days, you were just really lazy. <laughs> well, yeah, in a sense, yeah. Especially the further yeah. you go back, <laughs> it's, <bad. laughs> it's really just did somebody see you? And if they didn't yeah, see you, exactly. it didn't happen, you know, not like nowadays. Yeah, where, you can get away with it. Yeah. Right. It's a very different world. Uh, anyway, Brian, really thank you for, for going over that with us. Yeah, Let's no, move right you. into the yeah, pre-review uh, and get that knocked out because we want to hear the movies coming out. Thank you always, as as always, Mr. Mr. Biggie. Mr. Biggie. Not his name. Blind Biggie is his name. I, I'm just going <laughs> to screw that up. You're the out there. I am. Oh, well, there's yeah. two misters on the panel, so it's really messing me up. So um, <laughs> not used to that. Uh, so we're going to do the, the pre-review, and we'll be right back. The pre-review with Blind Biggie. The pre-review with Blind Biggie. Hi, welcome to the pre-review with your host, Blind Biggie. The pre-review is where I tell you about upcoming movies coming to movie theaters and beyond. This is for week January 16th through 22nd. The first movie on my list today is Missing. Missing is a mystery drama. When her mother disappears while on vacation in Colombia with her new boyfriend, June's search for answers is hindered by international red tape. Stuck thousands of miles away in Los Angeles, June creatively uses all the latest technology at her fingertips to try and find her before it's too late. Now, this movie stars Storm Reed and Nia Long, and it looks to be super intense. The movie Missing premieres in movie theaters on January 20th. Next up is the movie The Sun. This drama stars Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, and Anthony Hopkins. Peter has his busy life with new partner Beth and their baby. This is thrown into disarray when his ex-wife Kate turns up with their teenage son Nicholas, played by Zen McGrath. This movie looks very dramatic, and I have no doubt we'll be seeing some excellent performances. The Hugh Jackman drama The Sun premieres in movie theaters on January 20th. Next up is one I'm looking forward to. It's an A24 film also. It's the drama comedy When You Finish Saving the World. This movie is written and directed by Jesse Eisenberg. A mother and her teenage son can't seem to connect. 
yet they try to find that bond in other people. She latches onto a young boy she meets at the women's shelter, while her son falls in love with an extremely political student at his school. This movie stars Julianne Moore and Finn Wolfert. The A24 film, When You Finish Saving the World, premieres in theaters on January 20th. Next on my list is the horror fantasy, Kids vs. Aliens. With Gary and Samantha's parents out of town on Halloween weekend, a rager of a teenage house party turns into terror when aliens attack, forcing the siblings to band together to survive the night. This movie looks pretty fun. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to have some great special effects in it also. The movie Kids vs. Aliens has a limited release in movie theaters and premieres in video on demand January 20th. And last on my list but not least is Alice Darling. In this thriller drama, pushed to the breaking point by Simon, her psychologically abusive boyfriend, Alice rediscovers the essence of herself and gains some much needed perspective while on vacation with two close friends. However, Simon's vengeance is as inevitable as it is shattering. And once unleashed, it tests her strength, her courage, and the bonds of deep-rooted friendships. Looks like we're gonna see a great dramatic performance from Anna Kendrick, I can't wait to see this one. The movie Alice Darling premieres in movie theaters on January 20th. Well, that looks like it's all for the pre-review this week. Hope to see you out there. And thank you, Biggie, for the pre-review. As always, we really appreciate all your hard work and looking up all those movies for us. Those looks like some interesting films this week. Um, you know, we were joking about the verses, and that's kind of a permanent thing nowadays. Um, so we're going to move right on to The Losers, uh, which is a 2010 release. This is a DC Vertigo Dark Castle, if you will, for the comic book company uh, release. And it is a fun one because it stars a bunch of future comic book heroes uh, <laughs> yeah, before they are comic book heroes uh, <laughs> in a comic book movie. Go figure. Um, so this one, of course, stars Jeffrey Dean Morgan, uh, Idris Elba, Zoe Saldana, uh, Chris Evans, uh, before he was jacked, uh, if you will. And uh, let's see, a few others, of course. Jason Patrick makes a not common uh, appearance in films. Um, yeah. He shows up every so often. Um, so and then, of course, we'll get to Black Adam uh, here. So moving back over, let's start with Mickey. What did you think of The Loser? Oh man, I love this movie. Um, I remember when it came out. I went to it was, it was one of those that wasn't even on my radar, and someone was like, "Let's go check out this movie." Mm -hmm. We went to the theater, and I walked out like walked in with no expectations, and came out very happy, very satisfied. Thought I had a great time, and those that was my first introduction to Zoe Saldana and Idris Elba. I believe like the first time mm -hmm. I remember, I can remember mm -hmm. seeing them in a movie and being super impressed. I was like, "Dude, I don't know who they are, but they're amazing." And, you know, look where they are now. Um, yeah. I had knew I had knew who Jeffrey Dean Morgan was from Supernatural and mm -hmm. uh, Chris Evans from Not Another Teen Movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this was like, wow, that's that guy. He's pretty good. Um, <laughs> but the whole movie is just fun. Like to me, it's action. It's just always something awesome going on. Great fight scenes. Funny as all get out. Uh, Pooch is like my favorite character in out of the losers i just i relate to him so much he's so awesome um and also that's like my kind of villain where he's just like a bad guy you know what i mean like no no redeeming qualities at all he's just a piece of crap you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah I, I i love it it's it and i rewatched it again i was like i forgot how good this was i really enjoyed watching it again feels like there should be a solid sequel yeah I was kind of pissed when they didn't have a sequel. Brian, what did you think of all of uh, the losers? Um, so I've seen this one a couple of times. Um, and the first time, yeah, I like really loved it. It was like really kind of blown away by it. And the cast is really great. Always loved Chris Evans in this movie. Um, he's just like, yeah, playing this tech nerd and <laughs> he's just <laughs> over the top. Like does like, I love the whole elevator. Yeah, thing where he's just like singing <laughs> really really loud and like yeah yeah that whole yeah it's really good um and uh 
and then but but then this time around i found myself not really vibing with it as much for some reason i don't know what it was i think i was like picking it apart more um and that yeah not 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 to say that i still didn't like enjoy it i still like enjoyed it i think it just didn't hit as much for me this time around like it, it felt like there was a lot of st- like it felt like a movie of that time you know what i mean like there was yeah, a lot of yeah. like the color grade is like yeah. very much kind of like this specific kind of thing they did back then um there's a lot of like uh there's a lot of like scenes or sequences that just really don't really move the story along there's like cool looking you know like they're yeah. like walking out together <laughs> slow motion kind of thing. <laughs> you know, those kind of things you know um uh, but but still it's just it's like it wasn't anything that was huge for me it was just like eh, i just like noticed it more this time around all right, that's all. all right how about you tyler i kind of in the same boat like i feel like i still enjoyed the movie a lot i was probably more critical than i probably would have if i like had watched it maybe years ago um the beginning scene i think i, I was like immediately sucked in because I was like, man, are they about to are about to kill these younglings real quick? Are they gonna? <laughs> I was like, are they built? I was like, yeah, this I seems kind of odd. And then they do it. I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> this movie just got some points because that was a lot. I think like, um, yeah, it was cool seeing a lot of like these actors. This is the first time I'm seeing it. It it does have like that comic book feel with like those title transitions, and it's like, oh, it's a comic book mm-hmm. movie. It, we're gonna do like those comic book panels and stuff. I think this is like probably the last of it because this is right before Captain America and all of that, right? Like when Marvel really yeah. started, like, yeah. Um, yeah. And I still, I, I felt so bad for Zoe Saldana. Like, she's awesome in it, but I can see like she's still being typecasted and like over sexualized. Mm. And yeah, like there's a scene where they shoot the, she shoots the mirror up on the, the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. Come. No. That's and then they to reflect too. her yeah. butt. <laughs> that one dumb ass. Yep. Yep. Like, yeah. It took me out. Totally. I was like, okay, yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it for the most part. The villain is very villainy. Um, <laughs> for lack of a better way to describe that. It kind of reminded me of um what's his face in Daredevil? Uh Bullseye. Um, oh yeah. Not Russell. I don't know why I'm thinking Russell oh, Crowe. It's not him. Yeah, Colin. Oh, really? Yeah. Bullseye, yeah, like just over the top. <laughs> like I loved it. Yeah. All right, how about you, Mister Marvelite? Okay, let, let's play a game real quick. Um, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I want to I want to reference a 2010 film with an ensemble, uh, with a ragtag ensemble of characters that are all military trained. They all have special abilities. Um, they are basically spurned by their government. They're oh. um. They're, Ooh, I know. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. They're 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 basically they're basically on the run. An individual helps kind of spur them back into getting revenge on the core the the uh the corrupt government agent that had something to do with them being destroyed. Go I ahead. have a question. What do you think? No, I have a question. Okay. Do they yes. do they fly a tank? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, do they fly a tank in this movie? <laughs> yeah. So here's yeah. here's the thing. Yes, they do. <laughs> One of the movies is yes, they flew a tank. The other one's called Red. Oh yes. Oh yeah. yeah. That's right. And then you have this one, and they all came out in 2010. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Individually, the lo- losers. Now I didn't get. I didn't see this film because I was I was focusing on 18. And I, again, mm. another great uh, ragtag team, mm. government involvement, going after the evil agent. Um and of course you know it was like the faceless thing because all of them are named all of them are called Smith, um and so you have you have this you know it was a great film and it should have gotten a a sequel, but I believe because of Red, and because of the Losers and because of A Team these three movies happening in the same year mm. that wasn't going to happen yeah and it was it's 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 like the it's like the White House down Olympus has fallen thing <laughs> deep impact on like, yeah. you. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like uh, it by itself. I love the losers. In fact, I didn't watch it until we decided to do it. For, you guys decided to do it for this this the show, mm. and literally, I have been looking for this film because I did not know what film Chris Evans was dancing like an idiot in, and I wanted to see it badly. And then all of a sudden, we got to that scene. And I was like, "It's the movie!" Yeah, and I was super <laughs> excited, and I loved it. And and then I'm sitting there thinking, "Okay, this is the 
this you talk about red and the losers coming out in the same year they're both dc properties yeah. um uh oh. the losers being dc vertigo which i already love dc vertigo stuff when you have v for vendetta so mm-hmm. like it's it, it it just goes to show like we're, we're talking about we're these are all comic book movies that we're talking about this week and i feel like this is the recipe that dc should have kept doing these mm. individual stories that were yeah. kind of pulled out of the page of the comics but but are are something that were different like to this day people still don't know that red is a comic book right um yeah. you know it's we it's, considered like, it you, for you this know, episode Tyler? but we didn't do that one mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's like it's like it's amazing like it's unfortunate that there were three films that were super similar to each other that were brought in at the same time. Um, but then it's also really cool. Cause like one of the things I really liked about like losers was I was starting to keep team tally about how many Marvel character or Marvel actors <sighs> came out of this one film. You've got Chris Evans, Idris Elba and Zoe Saldana, like mainstays mm-hmm. in Marvel and they're doing a fantastic job. And they, they started, you know, they did DC. Now, of course we know Chris Evans did fantastic four beforehand. But, like, this movie was a very solid film. Some of it was obvious. As soon as they put the kids on the helicopter, I'm like, oh, the kids are dead. Right. You know? And it was right. like... Yeah. And it was like, it was like, as soon as, as soon as, um, as soon as they started fighting over Zoe Zaldana's character, I knew she was a bad guy, or at least she was, like, not telling them the truth about something, and it was yeah. going to come back to haunt them. And then when they, when, they, when they shot her in the hotel room and then she disappeared, I'm like, oh, she's going to come back and it's actually going to be a good thing. And, you know, it's like, there are certain things that kind of just made sense and as much as I love the last battle and stuff, like it was too obvious in some ways. Like the whole the 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 what was a motorcycle like flew into the plane, yeah. the plane blows up, and like like <laughs> it was it was like obviously it, it was obvious and cheesy, but at the same time, it was a bit satisfying. Like I didn't need it to be anything more than it was. Um, yeah, yeah. But and again, even though it was what it was and it wasn't perfect. It was a much better film than the two that we talked about before, or that we're that we're going to talk about other than. That. So, you know, it's 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 kind of like a contrast of where you can do so much with something and pour so much into it, but then something that almost was forgettable because people really didn't talk about it em- enough. And I don't feel like mm-hmm. losers really got the 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 recognition. Of the three, it, it was the least received. Yeah, exactly. And it, I think it was just because people weren't. There was so much going on in 2010. If you think about it, there were so many movies. Well, the comic book like, industry we, we, was going down in one way and going up in another, and it was right doing a lot. Uh, yeah, for film. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I love the characters. Um, it was it was interesting. Um, in some in some cases where I wasn't like super into it, but um, I, I think Chris Evans did a, did a solid. Like, I want to see more of that, Chris Evans. <laughs> I agree. I just I, I just thought that was fun. Yeah. Um, I actually think that this is the perfect comic book movie because of the fact that you could just get a box of popcorn and by the end of the movie, your hand is a grease pile and you're like, <laughs> you know, you're like, look at all the explosions. Uh, there's, yeah. there, there's no need for too much. It's just, here's a simple story. Rogue agents, they're badass. You know it. You don't even have to know their background. And I like just knowing sure it might be obvious but i watch it's kind of like watching commando you know he's gonna kill the shit out of him but you want to watch him do (laughs) it right like so it's not that he it's not Mm -hmm. that it's perfect it's that it's exactly what you want it to be in the moment you just want to take your date to this movie or go with your buddies and just veg out this is a veg out movie you know in a lot of ways um and i think there's how i describe the fast and furious movies right like it feels like those kids who like they used to play with their toys right that's what that movie is oh, yeah. well this movie starts <laughs> off with him playing with toys so it's perfect yeah. like yeah. literally yeah you know that's that's what they're telling you uh is this is some kids playing with their cameras and make it a spy movie you know um mm-hmm. and i can tell you uh, so i had the movie on today i watched it last because i really wanted it fresh in my mind um and I was I subjected myself to Black Adam twice in the last month. I'm not sure how I did that. Um, <laughs> spoilers on how I might feel about that movie. Um, so I, I put the movie on this afternoon. We're sitting with the kids at the table, and I'm kind of you know turned the iPad and watching. And my wife sees Jeffrey Dean Morgan on the screen. Of course, she's you know like a lot of ladies, she's like holy crap uh, about that guy. And so she like leans in and goes, you know what you what you watch. And then Idris Elba can, comes across the screen, and she's like. What are you watching? Well, how are you watching this movie without me? You know, is what she kind of kept eyeballing me. And um, yeah, it was, you know, there's there's something about just the cast being 
kind of the cream of the crop before they yeah. were. Every one of these actors, uh, except for maybe Pooch, um, I haven't seen Columbus Short do a ton of stuff. I mean, he's been yeah. around, but uh, but the four main uh, credits definitely have made solid careers, uh, and it's it's great mm-hmm. to see. Um, but it's just funny watching my wife do that. Is hilarious. <laughs> Um, Jason Patrick, um, actually the grandson, I think of Jackie Gleason, um, and, uh, not the most like distributed actor, but when, you know, he's not in a ton of films, yeah. but when he's in a film, he definitely seems to fully commit to that role. And I do appreciate him for that. And of course, everybody knows him from the Lost Boys is like his most famous role. Uh, I would mm-hmm. say, uh, I think of him, I think of sleepers when I think of Jason Pratt. Speed Patrick. 2 oh, Cruise yeah. Control. Yeah. Speed 2 Cruise oh, Control yeah. where he plays Keanu's <laughs> character. Oh, man. There we go. There we go. Oh. That's a, uh, yeah. That's, you know, but again, oh, he man. committed to the role. One. Like he did commit to oh, that yeah. role. Um, it's, mm-hmm. I don't know what would have saved that movie. Um, <laughs> even Keanu might not have saved that movie. Uh, the whole honestly. movie was yeah. on Cruise I mean, control. Sandy was in it too, but it still. <laughs> Sandy work. should be able to save every movie she's in and she failed with that one. So that's something. Um, but you know, I, I did like the, the way the the uh, the DP and the director played with the music in this movie, where they had moments where it would stutter with the beat. I actually like that kind of stuff. Uh, it may be basic, but it works for this kind of element, uh, where you're just basically trying to portray some badasses. Um, and I think that kind of stuff makes you look a little more badass. So I like the slow mo. Uh, I love it. You know, to me, it's the right amount. It's not Justice League level slow-mo it's just yeah 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 you know, it's, it's not too slow <laughs> and it's not too right. long yeah. right it's the right amount of slow-mo there was one stutter though that like it was after jeffrey dean morgan and zoe saldana's character like they do it and then like they walk out of the building and they're just walking down the, the stairs the thing yeah. and it's doing like the jitter thing and like <laughs> if they had gone had if the like... duck in the in, if the duck had moved a little bit in the vein uh... i think it would have worked but they right, didn't right. do it a fourth time so it it didn't work on that second on that third one <laughs> but the first two mm-hmm. i think it worked with them walking out of the building um but i, I hear you um <laughs> can characters be too badass though because these characters you know they stole the military chopper pff, no problem uh mm-hmm. right can they be too badass what do you guys think do you think that movies can they're elite i i think i i think they didn't go too far with that i think i think if we're gonna talk about over the top is the uh that wasn't a throw him off the building nod. That was like a <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. come on, like, <laughs> oh wow. That whole engagement, like your guy is that inept and he's your number one guy, like he doesn't get the nod thing. Like you didn't talk about that ahead of time. <laughs> like, hey, I'm gonna give a nod and you like punch him in the face. And Maybe he didn't like, know the mercenary he was dealing with. I mean, this is a guy that's known yeah. for throwing people off buildings. So Gosh. <laughs> he seems to have that reputation with the losers. Yeah. But he's just the kind of guy that would do that. So I, now, I think, that would have been cool. Like, like they, they would have been like, like when they explained him to Zoe Saldana, I'd be like, listen, he's the kind of guy that if you nod to punch someone in the face, he'll throw him off the building. You, you got to watch out. That sounds like, like, yeah, that's that all. Been... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little on the nose, but yeah. Um, that's actually, yeah. So that's Holt uh, Mc, McAllany, I think is how you say his name. Uh, I always think of Fight Club when I see that guy. He's the, you know, oh, his yeah. name is Robert Paulson. You know, that's that guy. Um, but then he's also in Mindhunter. And if you guys haven't seen Mindhunter and you like David Fincher oh, yeah. this he's, much. He's great in Mindhunter. Yeah, yeah. And he plays off of, um, what's his name in Mindhunter? Uh, the, the lead. Mm-hmm. How do I not remember his name? <laughs> he's only exceptionally famous and sings really well. Um, and sings really, yeah. He's in Frozen. He was in Glee. <laughs> like, he's literally. He was in Monster Trucks. Was he really? Oh. Um, and Groff. And Groff. There you go. Oh, there you go. Too. Groff, Groff is the guy. But Groff yeah. and and uh Holt here do a phenomenal job yeah. as playing the, the dual cops, and it's it's a fantastic show. If we'll ever get a season three. Anyway. Um yeah, I just thought I'd highlight him as well because he's an actor you don't really ever see, but when you do, I think he I think he brings it. In this, he's just a He was an alien either. three. Was he? Yeah. Which is also David Fincher. That would make some sense then. Yeah. Well, so is Fight Club. So, you know, that mm. also, you know, goes back. Yeah. So he's been working with Fincher for, uh, uh, you know, most of his career, it seems. Uh, anything else about the losers you guys want to discuss? Because I have a feeling that we could spend some time on Black Adam. Um, or just talking about movies in general if we don't want to spend some time on Black Adam. I got two things. Like, Please. they're real quick throwaway. Um, there was one part where there was a line where she was like, 
this is some kind of suicide mission. And I like, I like turned to the TV. I was like, you guys must be some <laughs> sort of suicide squad. I was like, no, <laughs> they got yeah. it before they got it. Um, <laughs> this the whole sequence on the freeway where they like, I don't know what the plan was, but like they were trying to like hijack a helicopter and stuff. And there was a whole thing with the rockets and the whole time, like they're having fun. And in my head, I'm like, Man, they seem to like really not be affected by the fact that they let some kids die early, <laughs> earlier in the film. Right. And it kept going, and then eventually it comes back for a little bit, and then they're not affected by it again. And that's just like I thought that was like weird, but whatever. I, that's the thing is like the movie kept throwing new stuff at me that I was like, yeah, cool, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> just give me more of that, and I'm, I'm like, I'm down. Right. Doesn't mean you don't need to explain it. <laughs> or, or like, or like the fact that the one the one guy was known for having bad relationships. And so he ends up in a relationship with Zoe Zanana's character, and what does he do? He tells her about all of their families. Exactly. And it's like, they don't know what, she doesn't know what our families do, do they? And they just, it's quiet. They're like, crap, it's that <laughs> Well, they were right. You know, you bring a woman into the equation, and the colonel has some problems, like, no doubt. Um, did anybody else feel like there was going to be the double-double cross at the end, where... Roke, Roke was going to be like, no, and I'm with you guys. You know, we, we can steal the money ourselves. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Uh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. wanted that. I honestly did want Roke to come back, um, but no, he he dies off screen instead. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's sad. Well, he kind of double double crossed because he double crossed them, then he double crossed the guy he double crossed them for. Right to try to. to just, yeah. I think he was more just like, I'm out of here, and okay, there's a billion with me. That's great. You know? Yeah, I, great. Um, and it's a prequel. Well, look to at Hobbs this. I Shaw, didn't know that was there. Right? Um, <laughs> how would he have like that money had to be marked? I'm sorry, like it's coming from the CIA. Right. There's no way yeah. that money wasn't marked. Um, and a billion from the CIA in cash. How did they do? Like, where the what? That was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it would look like it could have been a billion volume wise. I think they did a good job on the set, you know, making it look like a lot of money. But what? And who asks for money in <laughs> cash in a modern world? Like who? <laughs> And what a what a bad way to transfer all of it. Like oh, yeah. just a Learjet, yeah, just like yeah, just yeah. Like, crazy. Like, <laughs> and, and did anybody really like feel like when when the when the one guy got like got some like a bit of a spine and was like, You're not gonna do that, you're not gonna throw us off a building again. It's like, yeah, you're gonna get killed at some point. Like you're right. not, you're yeah. gonna die. Yeah. You're gonna die in here. Yeah. Like, like, you know, you're not getting your money. It's like now you got the cojones. Like what I have three thugs. <laughs> I'm I've got a spine now, you know. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. Um, you knew Max had a, had a, had cojones because he literally would walk up oh, on man. them when there's forty of them, and he's just like, "Whatever, I'll say whatever <laughs> I want, do whatever I want, and you'll deal with it." Um, and I'm so glad that they didn't lean in to a whole lot of CGI with the bomb, like you saw it that one time on the island. Because was cool. I was starting to get, I was starting to get like GI Joe vibes, mm. oh, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, it's mm. oh, don't." And then they didn't do it again. I'm like, oh, thank you. The plane <laughs> wrecking was a little, a little. Rough. Yeah, I was just gonna mention that too. Yeah, the plane. Yeah. And all that fire and yeah. It was a bit rough. That was but, a little. You know, it yeah. was 12 years ago. 13. Wow, we're in another year. 13. Yeah, years it's ago. not like it got that had the Black Adam budget. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Now, before well, we get into the Black Adam, we're gonna rate this movie first. But before we get into the Black Adam, I I do wanna, we'll we'll say something about the Rock and and all of that, but. Because uh, there is a due credit, I think, with that film that needs to be talked about um, because there was a lot done behind the scenes by people. But let's rate this film and move on to Black Adam so we can so we can actually get into the thick of it. I heard Mr. Marvelite uh, really wanted to talk about this movie because he has plenty to say. So uh, that said, uh, why don't we start with Tyler? What did you think of The Losers? What do you rate The Losers? I'm going to give it an eight because it's fun. Like, that's all I wanted. Um, as a kid, probably like a hundred thousand <laughs> right. metal as well. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I like yep. it. I like it. How about you? All the movie things. Uh, I'm gonna give it a seven this time around, and um, yeah, and like like what Tyler said too, like twelve year old me definitely would would have been all about this movie. Like, yeah. So <laughs> nice, nice. How about you, Mickey? Uh, now I'm probably leaning towards seven. Um, just a lot of fun. Like you said, just a zone out movie, have mm -hmm. a good time, nothing deep. Uh, and yeah, 
Kid Mickey would have been 10 out of 10, baby. This is rocks. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Mr. Marmalade. Um, I'm right with Tyler. Uh, this was a solid aid for me. Um, it's definitely rewatchable. I'm going to watch it again. Um, it's unfortunate, like I like like we were talking about, it, that it fell within a time that there were so many films that were similar to it. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. none of them were super strong enough to be able to hold the box office mm-hmm. to get a sequel like, like let's say, you know, Olympus Has Fallen. Um, and, you know, it, it was, it, it's a good film. And I, I, yeah, I would have definitely loved this as a kid as well. It just, it hits all those, those things. It's got the humor. It's got the action. You have that little bit of tension. Um, and of course it's got, it, 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 you, you kind of get the innuendo of what Zoe Saldana and him are doing, but they don't show it. So it made it really yeah, easy for the exactly. kid not to have to watch yeah. Like it, it didn't go there. Like I f- sometimes feel like going into the nudity and everything is just not necessary. Um, and so this, like you, you knew what happened. It was done. It was good. And yeah, absolutely. I, I, I like this film. I am going to agree with both Mr. Marvelite and Tyler. I think it's an eight. Um, this is a movie that I will revisit again. I've seen it. This is my third time, I think. Uh, and it's just fun. Just turn your brain off. Enjoy some explosions and watch badasses be badass and they're believably badass it's not like when certain actors get on screen and you're like oh come on you're not a badass why are you trying- why why is michael douglas on the screen trying to act like a badass sorry that's a yeah. throwback um, throw, throw back to black rain there but but some actors yeah. jeffrey dean morgan i'm like oh shit he said that you know and i and i believe it idris elba exudes i'm gonna fuck you oh, up yeah. so like oh totally uh they couldn't have picked a better person to be the double crosser anyway so yeah eight Kid me, I'm with Tyler. Hundred, hundred thousand somewhere in there. Damn Explosions, yeah. stylized action, can't go wrong. And not too many low shots. Not enough, you know. Not too many Michael Bay esque shots oh. from below. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. So we're gonna move on to the Black Adam, or just Black Adam, I guess. Uh, what I wanted to say about The Rock is that this dude worked for 15 years oh, to get man. this movie yeah. made, and it was a passion project for him. And I, I, mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons I'm willing to to have watched this fa- this movie was because of him and his passion for it. Otherwise, I'm kind of been done with the DCU uh, for a while. Um, but I was compelled, at least because of his passion for it. And his passion was not enough to to really draw me through this film um, mm-hmm. and be and be happy with it. Tyler, let's get your opinion on Black Adam first, and then we'll move to Mr. Marvelite. <laughs> um, I'm trying to pick different yeah. people first. I'm not trying to pick anybody for any particular reason. So, yeah, go ahead. See, now he's, uh, he's, t- he's in a hard place, because if he gives it too much of a positive review, and we'd eviscerate him. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you set the tone. Okay. How dare you give it that bad of a score? Right. Just like, uh, like a solid one. No. Um, <laughs> not a soft yeah. one? Solid. <laughs> Song. it's rock hard <laughs> a rock hard one <laughs> what I, I did what, what you were saying earlier because like i had also watched it on my own before I, so i had to watch it again within the same three week span of like this show happened so ooh, i i didn't like it the first time i didn't finish it this time i finished it through um i automatically i have a thing for when whenever movies do a thing with narration like they have to have like a narrator because and oh, all of the yeah, things that they're yeah. talking about like why don't you show me this like you can show me don't tell me this <laughs> and then you have a kid doing it it's like i don't I, you're trying to introduce me to this character i don't care about anything still <laughs> and like most of the movie is that it's like i didn't know what to care about half the time um i think this movie really did it for me with like the rock i love the guy i love him as an entertainer but man the rock as an actor just like unfortunately which sucked because he's the title character he like sucked the life out of the movie i don't know what happened like everyone else was somehow more interesting than black adam for me at least i don't know how you guys felt but like everything else felt more um pierce brosnan seemed like he had more charisma than um i i actually cared about what was happening to him more than black adam and then unfortunately he took a took an l so i was like okay so well that's gone he took a leap of fate if you will yeah that's funnier than the movie. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> like, that's the problem. Like, if this movie, it wasn't even like bad funny, which I would have loved to. Like, if it, I was right. like, man, could this just be terrible so I can at least have? Fun? <laughs> I was like, not even having fun. And <laughs> man, the the dialogue. I, I we were we were talking about it earlier. The dialogue, it really felt like 
I don't know if an AI generated this this script, but like everyone just felt like they were just saying lines. The structure, it's weird because all the pieces for a good superhero movie was there, but mm-hmm. it somehow wasn't working. Like I don't that slow motion scene with the painted black song. Oh like I, I was so upset. I was like, why? <laughs> why did you this is yeah. like you're like five years too late, sir? Like <laughs> not this song again, please. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the real study feels. We'll have it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, Mr. Marvelite, what did, did you think? Of, what did you think of Black Adam, Mr. Mr. Marvelite? So I watched this. Just your initial. COVID just your and... initial views. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I I watched this while I was um while I was going through COVID um. Mm-hmm. Which I joked about like uh, Morbius because I watched it again and I was like, oh, it, it was it, it was better than I expected because I had no sense of taste. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> wow. there's there initially initially the the problem for me was there were things that I really wanted to like. I wanted to like seeing Justice Society. I was really excited about Doctor Fate. I was really excited about this idea <clears throat> of expanding the, yeah. the DCU world. Um, and um. You know, like like this had been something that had been teased for a while. And as much as I liked Shazam, I was really hoping to like Black Adam because it was supposed to be pulling from the lore. From the, I thought it was gonna be pulling from that lore at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even like even like some of the technology, like I immediately thought like Luther Corp, like soldiers, like those those flying devices, like that brought me back to like the '90s, like Death of Superman, where Lex Corp had the uh, the, the 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 flying guys. Um, I can't, I don't remember what they're called, like patrolling metropolis. Like, I'm like, that's what these guys are. Um, mm-hmm. but of course, then you have it's, 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 um, you know, it's inner gang and everything else. And mm-hmm. you're sitting there and it, it was difficult for me to really invest myself in the film. And I have a lot more to say, but I'm going to try to keep it to initial. Uh, uh, opinions and i'm just gonna stop right now before i get we've got 45 <laughs> minutes we've got plenty of time for you to go off but it's i do want to kind of get everybody yeah i just want to get everybody's voice, kind of thing because we can be talking yeah we could yeah. just we could just yeah. yeah agreed um yeah mickey black adam <laughs> all right so that whole like uh entrance sequence just felt like uh wish.com 300 or something like uh, uh I didn't like any of it. I I was having a hard time just getting into it to start with. The best part of this movie was the Justice Society to me. Um, Like, I think everyone else is probably going to agree. Cyclone was such an interesting character. Uh, Hawkman, Dr. Fate. Adam Smasher was just kind of there, but he he was still interesting. It was fun. Yeah. Um, I, I... I don't, my DC knowledge is, you know, shallow at best, unless we're talking about like Batman. I know a little bit more, but so for me, I was like, I didn't realize Hawkman was like a Batman kind of guy. Like, well, this guy's got like his own jet and stuff. And I thought he was a more magical guy, not like a tech guy, which kind of threw me off. But the actor, uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, was amazing though. He did a great job. Although sometimes he was just, although sometimes. He's kind of given that rock energy too, where it's like, I'm just gonna kick your ass <laughs> with nothing behind it. Um, the rock was just a robot, it felt like they could have like hired an android to do the job. He didn't have to show up at all. Um I don't know, man. This movie like drained me because I felt like every action sequence was a climax. Like I was like, dude, are we is this the end of the movie? Is this the end of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> right. Where is this so, building up to? Yeah. It, it was just like there was there was a lot, but yeah, that's my initial stuff. Right mm-hmm. there. Sure. How about you, Brian? Um, so this is the second time I've seen it. Um, saw it in the theater first time, and it was very interesting watching it again this time around because I definitely was like, like the things that I didn't like about it initially, I liked even less. I was just like, oh man, this really does not work. Like these certain things. Um, like the kid really bugged me throughout the whole movie. Um, yeah. And like Tyler mentioned that whole opening sequence with the narration and everything. I'm just like, man, if you got to do this, this is already a red flag. Like, I mean, let's like, yeah, we could talk forever about like, (laughs) that's not how you open a movie, but (laughs) 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, the paint of black sequence is almost laughable now. Uh, <laughs> like, um, yeah, and like I still love. I mean, man, Pierce Bros is so damn good, and yeah. in this, I mean, yeah, loved. I want to see more Doctor Fate. Really, I just I want to see a Doctor Fate movie. You know, there's so much cool stuff behind that character. Um, and like, I don't know much about Black Adam's lore, but I, I didn't think this was it. Like, I didn't think this was like the initial way he comes to be. But um, no, yeah, it's just like it felt clunky. Like, it didn't feel, you know, smooth throughout the whole thing. There's just like. Like Mickey mentioned, there's a lot of like, oh, there's all these like climactic moments, you know, and you really can't like anticipate anything or feel like there's any build up to anything, you know. Oh, and don't, uh, oh man, okay. The damn, <laughs> that, that demon. Oh, oh man, that's so Seven bad. Wolves, negative 1.0. <laughs> yeah. It was well. He felt yeah, like we he was pulled right out of a bit. fighting game. That's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. That's what it felt like. like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Look, it's from Killer yeah, Instinct. Like, I, I like, see the you know, fucking right out. Yeah, I see. The- I see it was from the knockoff of Killer Instinct. Right, but- <laughs> right, right. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, interesting I see the voice, Funko but, Pop. Yeah. It's a Funko. Pop. I see the Funko Pop everywhere. They have, they like made too many of the Funko yeah. Pop version of that character. I'm like, oh, they should have had the Funko Pop. And yeah, they're gonna love that. Be cute. Like, <laughs> might have yeah. been better. Uh, so for so. me, the rock in this movie, the the, the one note that Mickey mentioned, it, it is the whole movie. Even though there's climaxes, uh-huh. even in the losers, I'm like, oh, an explosion. In this, I'm like, oh, an explosion. Again, who cares? <laughs> right. And it's weird. At, at least, at least with Superman, you get a mild mannered, you know, Clark Kent, and you get Superman yeah. all Boy Scoutish, and so you get a kind of a range of a character. Black Adam's just, I'm angry. And there it is. That's his entire. Yeah, that's two no, and a half hours. Like there's, yeah, there's no, no emotion, fluctuation. Like, uh, even him yeah, with this yeah. kid, it was because it was digitized. I guess it, he just couldn't convey any emotion. Um, I would have rather him done like yeah. you know a, a Knight's Tale like scream like Teth Adam or something. It would have been more mm-hmm. something than just this one note acting. And it's weird because like you watch something yeah. like Central Intelligence and you're like, oh, he can he can play a weird off the wall character. He can do something with it. He's not just one note in most of his role well he's like three quarters of a note in most of his roles um but oh, yeah. he, you know he he brought nothing he literally just raised his eyebrow for oh, the my. film and i'm like dude 15 years and you you brought this kind of energy i was a little thrown by it um yeah there was a moment uh, and then we can get into full open discussion there was a moment where the you know, demons are coming up from the ground and they decide as a, as a town or as a city to start fighting them, which I thought was hilarious because there was nobody there when they were raising from the ground. They brought the people to them to fight them and then they all <laughs> dissipated and didn't need to fight them in the first place. Uh, what yeah. was that? Why? Like, all you needed was your superheroes. You guys could have just sat back, not had a couple people probably get injured yeah. or killed by fighting uh-huh. demons. Um, and it felt like just another needed, an unneeded layer uh, to this film. So, Mr. Marvel, you, 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 the chains are off. Let's hear it. I want to. I want to hear you guys. <laughs> let's, talk about the, let's let's talk about the real villain of Black Adam, and that's Zaslov, uh, the CEO for Warner Brothers uh, uh, Discovery. Uh, first of all, like I, I get where you're coming at, where you were talking about how you know the Rock, you know he he. This was a 15, 15 year passion thing for him. There's a problem though. As soon as as soon as he started pushing, he he pushed for executive producer of of Super Pets, but did very little promotion of that. Um, he then usurps all of the leads when it comes to you know Warner Brothers like leadership to go right to Zaslav to make this deal to bring back Henry Cavill. Yeah. Um, and and it goes completely against a deal that's in the process at this time for you know saffron and for for gun to take over yeah. dc studios which would it was was always going to make them look like the bad guys because mm-hmm. they were going to be like this was not part of the plan um and, and again zaslav made decisions without ever consulting anybody and just did his own thing but then when rock made sure that his contract stated that he could never lose mm-hmm. made me turn yeah. off completely mm-hmm. to, 
in his contract with Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. Black Adam could never lose to any other character in the DCU, including Superman. Including Superman. <laughs> Right, and when asked to do a cameo, can't beat you. I don't think so, dude. <laughs> Sorry. And when asked to do a cameo for Shazam: Fury of the Gods, he basically called it the Little League. Like he's like he yeah. he acted like it was nothing. Damn. So there's a I didn't so, know that. so this okay. is where this is where like when you think about he's kind of always like, had like, some since, contractual things like that. Like in all the Fast Furious movies, there's yeah. a whole yeah. weird thing between him and Vin Diesel, or yeah, he can't lose. <laughs> yeah, and he's either. done it for a while. But it's yeah. like it's like Central Intelligence was a great film for him. I thought it, he had great range. It was it was definitely something new. I liked him in Game Plan way back when he first kind of started doing mm-hmm. filming because it showed a softer side of him. But then yeah. you get into like Hobbs in you know in the Fast and Furious, and then you yeah. know in um um the what, what uh, what's the the other what's the name of the movie um the Mummy no well no I mean like, let's face it Black Adam was kind of like the Mummy too in a sense for him. <laughs> But like you, um, you have them like. Whenever he plays a tough guy, he plays the same tough guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the kid, I didn't dislike him as much as as some of you guys, but I, I, but when it got to the point where he's rallying the people, that was the most non yelling like. Hey guys! Inc- hey. hey guys! We want to. <laughs> Everybody in the- Let's do this, guys. <laughs> Come, it was like Morty me. out there, like, "Hey guys, yeah. you know." Yeah, yeah. The whole like calling for for attention, like, like yeah. it was really low. Like it was, it was, it was like there was no passion, and I don't blame the kid because it was leadership, like directing him. Then let me get into the fact. Or find a kid when that would the has Justice the voice Society? Dropped. I'm sorry. <laughs> when would the Justice Society ever work with Amanda Waller? I mean, like, right in this movie, that's true too. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, like that was like the, the Justice Society was like the Justice League of their time, mm-hmm. and. And they were they they were more respectful, and they wouldn't have done this whole oh we have to keep the stability of the socioeconomic of the times and stuff. They would have been in, they would have gotten involved in things. They wouldn't have been le- wouldn't have let, allowed Amanda Waller to restrict mm-hmm. her. I don't know everything about these comics, but I do know that when they had their mainstay teams, like the only time that they ever they ever um, were were called out for anything is when they became dispassionate for the people. And this Justice Society was way beyond. What I've expected, because like even like Hawkman, Hawkman can be a, a, a jerk, but this guy was reminiscent to a bag that you might find on a Midsummer's Eve, and it was one of those things where I just I did not like him until the last five minutes of him fighting the demon, like when he finally when he finally put his 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 fight aside with Black Adam, or um it may he was he was a better character. But it was like he was way too much of like a government sellout. He was way too much of this like I don't, I'm not going to listen to anybody thing. And he's got Doctor Fate there giving him guidance. Like that's mm-hmm. that, even if he didn't listen to anybody else, Doctor Fate should have been the one that he would like. Well, they've known each other for years too. Well, it'd be yeah, like, like Xavier yeah. being yeah. in the room, and you're like, "Shut up, old man! Like, why would you do that? Why would <laughs> right. you do that? Yeah, you should listen." Yeah. So, but but and he yeah, ultimately it, has no there, choice. But I think that's part of the the growth of his character to some degree, but we won't get to see that. That's what's great about this movie. They grow <laughs> right until the, you know, right at the end. And then so we don't get cool. to see them again. Like, yeah, sure. it's like the most throwaway and, and, cameo of all time. Sorry. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like I, I find that the way, like, I don't even know if you intended to do this, but putting Do- um, Howard, the duck and black Adam in the same show, like there are so many similarities, like the studio didn't take it seriously. Um, it, 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 it tried to over deliver on stuff that wasn't necessary. It didn't follow any of a, a proper storyline. And I realized part of the reason that the DCU just completely failed when it did is because whereas Marvel will take source material and then take artistic liberties with it, like Age of Ultron is nothing like Age of Ultron right. Right um, in the comics. But there is a source material for at least their characters and what they did. They, Warner Brothers did not follow any source material when it came to stru- constructing these characters. And they, 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 there are the people who don't read the DC comics who are fans of this stuff because they don't know anything. And then there are the DC fans that are okay with it because at least they're seeing their heroes on the screen. And there should be yeah. more of a, dis, there, there should be more dis, discriminating against, you know, poor writing and poor character development than just saying, oh, at least you got Superman or at least you got Black right. Adam. Because these are characters that should, and this is the thing New World did not respect Power of the Duck, did not respect Marvel. That's why we did not get Marvel movies. And when we did, they were terrible. 
because they didn't respect them. They thought comic book movies were trash. Marvel is now respected, and Disney gives them the reins with the MCU. So what would DC need to do to, to possibly come, come out of this? And I think they're in the process of doing it. Get people who respect the property, respect the fans, and, 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 and give us something that is, is giving honor to the, to, the, to the actual properties and the source material. On because that, that's what that's what Marvel did. Right. On that note, Mr. Marvelite, I would argue yeah. that it may be too late. Uh, the the comic book movie industry, while still popping right at this moment, as they're laying out this plan, I can tell you, like my wife has been in it, in it since Marvel or since Iron Man. I mean, and she even watched you know mostly X Men movies and Spider Man, etc. So she's been inundated with her whole life, and right now she's like, I'm tired of all of this shit, and she doesn't want to watch any more of it. And she's been dedicated to every single movie this whole time. So even diehard fans mm-hmm. are getting to the point where they're just like, okay, is, if, Bla- if Black Adam's going to be the kind of shit you continue to give us, why do I want to keep spending money to go to the movie theater to watch comic book and movies? It's, and it might not, be A24 that's, you know, popping off in the next 10 years or something like and that. And it's, it's, it's not even the comic book movies, too. The comic book industry is starting to see kind of a decline as well. Um, whereas like you, you, if you look at like the right in 2020, when the, when pa- the pandemic hit, like comic book sales w- were, were skyrocketing. Um, we were at Michael and uh, I superhero talk were at, um, uh, awesome con and we were able to get within feet of a $60,000 copy of, I'm sorry, a $40,000 copy of amazing fantasy 15 first appearance mm-hmm. of super, uh, Spider-Man, mm-hmm. um, that went and peaked last year. Like probably like like closer to like like the end of the summer. I, I think it was like sixty thousand dollars. It's now lost twenty percent of its its thing. It's down to like oh. like it's back down to forty thousand dollars. It's wow. it's now starting to go down more. Wait for Spider Man so, movies, then it'll go back up. Yeah, yeah. Right, but at, but at the same time, like there's a trend with all comics. Like if you like if uh you go to Shortbox and you can actually look at the historical data of some of the comic books and where they mm-hmm. were going for. There's a there's a steady decline now, and we're probably going to start seeing there to be less of this and the movies if they're good could spurn it back into something sure but the problem is there's too many people that are so invested in this because they feel like this is all they could have had like they want to keep having the flashpoint they want to have the fury of the gods they're going to be angry for any super you know any future superman but die or hard fans else. aren't going to keep this industry alive they're not going to keep the comic book exactly. movie industry up there there's not enough of them they still have to appeal to the main audience, and the main audience is getting bored. Uh, they want something else. Vampires were big for a while, then they got boring, and people stopped wanting to watch vampires. I think we're soon going to see a turnaround on that, but that's just my prediction. Zombies, I always use the Western, know. too. Wait till Blade comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But the Western's a good point. There was a huge era yeah. of Westerns, and yeah. then now there's like one every so often. Um, mm-hmm. Because, you know, there's still diehard fans that'll be like, oh, look, a new Western. Uh, yeah and well and some and some argue too that like um in this day and age global box office is such a huge thing and the chinese market is freaking a huge chunk of that and which is why like top gun maverick was such a like a feat of box office you know success because they didn't even play in the china chinese market and they still were able to mm-hmm. you know isn't but, he banned from china Tom Cruise aren't most I don't of his know, movies being possibly. Movie. But it's it's such I mean it's such a like American, you know, rah rah yeah. patriotic kind of film. Well the Chinese yeah, government Chinese could have been the bad it. guys in that movie easily transplanted without right. even talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Well it's yeah. it's like um it's like um what was it? Um when they did Red Dawn when they recreated that, it was supposed to be the Chinese yeah. government. They recreated yeah. the North Korea. And and even like if you think about like Marvel, Marvel is struggling in the Chinese market right now because mm-hmm. as they're as they're having more representation and we're starting to see LGBTQ like yeah. you know representation in the films, it's getting banned over there and it's getting banned in a lot of the Middle yeah. Eastern uh, places. So they're not going to reach the same box office as like <laughs> let's say Avatar two, you know, what we want to mm-hmm. talk about that. And then you have all of these things that you know will do better, and it's only because they're at those markets that'll make a lot of money. Right. Yep. I would yeah. also say they're like fighting. I just like the whole like internet culture in general. Like they're also like nowadays are fighting like as soon as you like even announce something now, like people are talking about it and that can also yeah. ruin people wanting to even go watch the thing or like, you know, how do we do marketing? Cause maybe like this thing isn't working now and we have to refigure that out. But by then it's already too late. And- well, you could cancel Batgirl cause it's not getting the numbers before it's even released, <laughs> you know? 
that do uh, like, oh, all that uh, stuff. Okay. But you're, that's uh, your point. That's what I, you know, that yeah. that viral kind of crap is what's happening instead of them just going, "Here's the movie. What do you think?" We would have never mm-hmm. had Howard the Duck in this modern nope. market. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or we would have had it, and it would have ruined everything else. Right, um, one or the other. That's a good point. But here, yeah. but here's the thing: I I think of, and I think I think the fans also cause this problem as well. You know, we 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 get these funny. Okay, listen, I have Marvel on my shirt. I have Marvel all over the place. I love DC. DC was what got me into my fandom. The death of Superman in mm-hmm. 1990 was the thing. And so when you when you consider that being, or I was I was 92, I think. Um, when you consider that being like you know something that brings people in they should be just like kevin feige always like wishes success for dc for the dc properties and i believe with james gunn and saffron coming in what we're gonna see (laughs) is this potential for a revival it can either go one of two ways we get oversaturated and we're gonna get we're gonna just be like like you said snippets Mm -hmm. um they're gonna stop wanting to watch these films or because there will be open communication because i believe one of the things that i i could see happening with Feige at the helm of Marvel and Gunn at the helm of DC is we one day get Marvel versus DC. Are you saying they're going to make an Amalgam Studios and we're going to get to see... <laughs> no, I think we're, we, we may one day get a cross... Oh, we could get a, there is more potential for a crossover between the two now than any other time. If I get to see Susan and Hulk fight each other, I, I can die a happy human. That's all. But I the fans say. are the fans are going to crap on this. I mean, they're already there. There's already boycott James Gunn and fire James yeah. Gunn again. You know, we're getting all this stuff again, because they can't handle. Diehard change. fans don't change how the movie does. Honestly, some they can have some sway. Obviously, we have the Snyder Cut because of how many years did they work at that. But honestly. If it's not a main audience, it doesn't matter. Your your little cult audience isn't going to change whether this movie's successful or not. It's either going to hit resonate with the main audiences or it's not. And so they can boycott him all day long. It doesn't mean he won't still release things. People are still watching James Cameron films, so you know that says something. And, and even with that Snyder cut thing, there's still like a huge asterisk with it right. because of the whole like bots and like. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the stuff, like a lot of that, was wasn't even real, right? Yeah. You know, well, in the, the circumstances thing. around the original film, the circumstances yeah. as to why he had to step away, these yeah, were very no, exactly. unique circumstances, yeah. and it's not. And this is why we haven't gotten a, uh, you know, an Ayers cut or a, you know, whatever other mm-hmm. stupid yeah, cut exactly. that people yeah. talk about. Because yeah, and we no have not even we reason. we we still haven't addressed the whole Ray Fisher thing. Like Warner Brothers still doesn't want, right. They'll they'll do all this stuff, but they won't touch on that. Like that's the problem. Like they don't respect they don't respect the people. They don't respect the property. They 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 would rather you know cover their bases with Ezra Miller and J- and and Joss Whedon oh, than oh. than 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 address allegations, fulfill commitments. Like I'm okay with the big three like suing Warner Brothers. I get it. Like I was for when 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 Scarlett Johansson uh, uh, sued Disney because of Black mm-hmm. Widow being yeah. released on um, uh-huh. Disney. Like I understood that it made sense. Yeah. It was a breaching contract. The same mm-hmm. thing for Ben Affleck, uh, Gal Gadot, and and um, Henry Cavill, especially mm-hmm. had Henry Cavill given this promise from The Rock. I feel like The Rock should be a little bit liable for that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm saying this out of a, out of a love for all comic book properties. I want DC to, to succeed. I of course. I, I I have all of. I even have all of the DCU stuff. Like it's it's okay. I've got those things. I enjoy. I find ways to enjoy them. Um, you know, and and I hate like, watch them, it, and it's I, I worth prefer, it, right? <laughs> I kind of like I prefer, I prefer the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman than the theatrical release. Mm-hmm. Like I prefer the director's Agreed. cut of Suicide Squad than to the original release. Agreed. Um, there are the, the, the yeah, I, and I I can sit through those things and watch them. I've probably watched them more than I. In fact, I think when I was when I was trying to cut vinyl records, I stabbed myself in the chest by accident. I was watching Batman v Superman, so. It's one of those things where so you have you, visceral uh, memories around that film. <laughs> <laughs> Martha. Oh, so I'm actually, I gotta say, I don't know if Law's still in the chat. Law was here in the chat earlier. I think she might have gotten off early enough to, to jump in and say hi. But I'm glad she's not here for this episode just because when it comes to DC properties, she's very defensive of them. And I, when people start defending them, I get more aggressive about my obliteration <laughs> of them. And so. When people bring up Man of Steel and they're like, "Oh, I love that movie," I I tend to just kind of go. And off. see, that's the thing. So, like, I I loved Man of Steel. I I there were things that. I didn't like about it. I did not like the organic science of them. 
Like I, like the one thing as I soon as I saw that it, when I when I didn't see the when I didn't see the crystallized science when I found out that they were they were basically breeding Kryptonians mm -hmm. out of like incubation chambers like that turned me off like that super turned me off because it wasn't that they leaned too much in the science that killed them it was the fact that they ignored the signs of their destruction and so like they're like all of these things like it's 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 so unscientific that you let your your planet blow up when there was obviously a scientific problem. But you. But that was true. You, in, you, even I, Christopher Reeve, Superman. They knew there was a problem, but they just. Yeah, and let's listen. Know. Even Chris, I know, I know that some of you guys love Christopher Reeve, Superman, but I, I'm going to mm -hmm. say this right now: you kiss Lois, and she forgets everything. That's that's crap. That's crap writing. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't agree because there's something whimsical about that. There was something about. Superman getting more powers on screen that we were like, all right, he can spin the earth. He can, it's fine. We didn't care because right. it wasn't about that. It was about seeing him. We believed a man could fly and, you know, pick up cars. Um, I don't know. I, and spinning around on a bar stool so fast that it didn't kill him. I loved that scene. That's one of the best scenes in the <laughs> Superman franchise when you know, he finally comes back and kicks the shit out of that guy. Yeah. Um, I love that. I, I love the silent, the, the, the cellophane cape. I, I don't know. It's, it's much mm -hmm. like yeah. Mickey explaining why he still likes Howard the Duck. It's the same stuff. It's the same reason. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have so no problems with it. All I can think of that was, all I can think that was when he threw it. He's like, I'll save him for later. Right. <laughs> that's what it felt like. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, that's the whimsy I missed from the, the 2010s mm -hmm. DC universe. Is I, There was no yeah. like lightheartedness kind of anywhere, really. Like You had to like look for lightheartedness. And that bothered me. I, I liked the like, the world could be a better place. I'm Superman, not let me freaking mm -hmm. melt into a pile of skulls because I'm Superman. Like, I, I just, <laughs> that's just weird to me. I don't know. It really, you didn't like the part where Superman killed someone. Caused a lot of you know, I have serious problems with him killing someone, but that's just my own, my own take. And again, like I said, I'm trying not to do this because I will just shit all over that movie in very bad <laughs> ways. I, I've, I've hate watched it six times in order to try to find redeeming qualities, and I cannot. Well, it, it has it. the best score, I think. Okay, like score. Score. I'll give score. And I'll give special effects. <laughs> give I think the, music. The, the super fighting give is really music. cool in it, right? The super fighting yeah, is really, yeah. really good. In fact, oh, yeah. Black Adam stole everything from both Man of Steel and Justice League across the board. And it still all the wasn't good, shit, as good. All the, you know, yeah. yeah, and it still wasn't as good. Like, no. no. And just watching a man move in slow-mo with his legs slightly bent, and he flew oh. that way everywhere. That really bothered yeah. me. Why yeah, did he did. fly, like, you know, everywhere he went? Like, could you put a hand out? Could you fly vertically? I just love the fact that he would like he just like, what, like went straight through walls. Like and that was that. Had, I know. Or, or the like oh, need that he constantly yeah. just had to keep killing people, and then, and not just for the doing it, yeah. but just to, to yeah. for the joke. Like he kept killing people for the joke, and I was like, <laughs> that was like that was like unloading his clip into him, and he's bulletproof, but yet he's still like stopping him with his hand. I was like, I think yeah, he was having fun with that. Right. I think Why he was just like, can him? I stop these? Oh yes, I can. Like, you know? I was just be yeah, like, yeah. you can just roll up to him; he's not gonna hurt you. Well, yeah, if yeah. he's the same as Superman, he gets shot in the eye. It won't make a difference. Yeah. And then he's trying to figure out a catchphrase. Was... Oh, my God. I, I, I did bad. like that part. <laughs> I did like the recurring, why, like, where he's why did we never get a, Why did we never get, like, a, did you smell what the Black Adam was cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I would not have been surprised. I'm really, yeah, that's, it's, yeah. I mean, what if it's it, like a 12 year old was writing the script in some cases. What, well, why? For me, it was like, that was the only thing that I was getting that was like, something from him you know what i mean like yeah. it was like he just was just so you know nothing and then we'd finally win those moments of him trying to like do this catchphrase i was like oh there's this bit of humor that he's trying to like attempt and for me i was like well, i thought you were gonna say there's a bit of human so. in him there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like oh mickey you were gonna say something we see something i where i when amanda wallace showed up i was like why is she here like why yeah. would she have any why is she why is her and the Justice Society like working together? I, I didn't get it. I felt like this movie like crammed a shit ton of like DC Easter eggs and like th there's yeah. merchandise everywhere. I, I was like, please. The, oh, the yeah. girl, the that blonde girl that... at the at the prison, is she from like yeah. Peacemaker or something? I, and I didn't know I have it. No idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah. I guessed oh, that. The so, James, okay. James Gunn's wife is in that movie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. well how did you guys feel about there was like an easter egg thing where like because i think the whole thing was black adam i'm not super first but black adam fighting the justice league or whatever right or like superman and stuff 
there's a part where there's like posters in the kids room and i was like i i I can feel the fans being upset like that was their like hey guys they're beating up he's fighting superman by punching a poster (laughs) and i was like i think at least twice there's like few moments in that in his room where he like destroys superman stuff right and even punches through the black um, and red poster the red s yeah um i think that this would have worked better had it been the first non the first dcu film rather than dce mm. uh-huh. that way it would be like look we're destroying mm. the old and bringing in the new it would have felt a little better oh. rather than being the last film where it's really like look we're destroying right. what we've already built is what it felt like yeah. more than we're destroying the old bringing in the new like that's is anybody me. else feeling like viola davis is playing white uh, amanda waller the way she is not because that's how she wants to play amanda waller but it's just because of how she feels of signing the contract <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah. like, at a zero, I'll over. be there. At a zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, why would three why would days? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> three days yeah. do anything with her. Why would why would he be like? Now, there are behest. moments where Superman has worked with Amanda Waller, but for specific reasons because it's what. Yeah. Works but she's best been for manipulative him. in what she's done. It like it right, was right. never but like. So is he? So it was never like I need you to go out. do this. Like she never would ask him straightforward because that's not that's not how she did she did things. Right. Like yeah. she would manipulate him to do it, but it's like I, it just it was it felt really weird. Right. Like the Justice Society following her, and then then Superman showing up after that that message. Like I'm like, oh, yeah, that's isn't there a point? I think there's a point in which Waller like gets to the head of the government, and everybody has no choice but to listen to her. So I think there is some. No, I am. I am um, in this. But. I imagine the. I she probably has gotten some type of promotion since the Sorrow incident. Um, but of course, like uh, the, the way the DCU does it. They don't really give you any like in between of what's going on. Right. Like there is, and I think that's part of the problem. Like, okay, these are all interconnected. I, I think the only time we've ever gotten like a, a good streamlined like explanation from one movie to the next was how they pulled the the flashback for Batman v Superman to like Bruce Wayne being in Metropolis Steel, at the time right. of the Battle of Zod. Right. And he yeah. he's you understand why he hates Superman because he holds yeah. him responsible for the death of the people and that little girl. It that also lost was for fans. us fans like, who that were makes like, sense. there were millions of people that died and you didn't yeah, address that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. well, they actually addressed that. I was, was like, like, oh, good. <laughs> finally, they addressed it. Well, it's like the battle, the battle, the battle between Superman and Zod is like, oh man, they destroyed a, a Wayne Tech uh, satellite. That's messed up. No, no, they did. Mm. They did. They, they killed a whole bunch of Wayne Enterprises people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots of them. A little more like, than that. So many. Yeah. I mean, how many skyscrapers fell because of Zod throwing Superman through them? I'd say five, seven. That's there was some, there was some video I saw or some some uh, article that they estimated the destruction of Metropolis <laughs> was just astronomical, mm-hmm. like as far as lives <laughs> and money. I mean, like, Lawrence Fishburne made it though, so like, so we're good, yeah. right? He's you know? good. Yeah. Well, that's the that's thing. The like, thing. even that's in the comic movies books. in general, like, and especially movies yeah. with the rock right. in them. San Andreas, the entire fall, uh, fault of California falls to <laughs> everybody dies, millions oh, die, God. but he saves his family. Mm-hmm. So good on yeah. us, right? Well, even even in the comic books, if you think about it, Metropolis is a giant rolling city, but it has had like hundreds of square miles just decimated in multiple events. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you have one, you have one, you have you have like a B list like villain come in, and there's like a hundred thousand Metropolis people that are totally. dead. Like yeah. it's just no. What I want to know is who still moves to Metropolis when you know there's supervillains there, like <laughs> oh. or Gotham. Who chooses matter. to stay in Gotham, like or Central <laughs> City, or you know, you name it, you know, Star City. Um, I'm not sticking. What, a place what insurance where agency would work there? Well, yeah. they would have great rates. They, like you, you would, they would, their rates would be really high, and people would pay them. Wayne obviously <laughs> pays some pretty ridiculous insurance insurance rates, but yeah, I don't know it. <laughs> Black Adam, man. <laughs> Uh, how many times? How many trip. times did they say Kondok in this movie? Like the name of the city. Well, I kept thinking <laughs> Evil Dead every yeah. time I heard it. That's. I, that's think, it's like, I think every scene it said like Kondok, and I was like, and, and it was still the, the name you can't remember if you want to save it. Like you have to have it written somewhere in some cases. <laughs> yeah. Or, or right. up, like con Kondok, Kondok. That's where it is. Yeah. Con. <laughs> Con cave, the con <laughs> construct. Yeah. I mean, they, they even had inner gang, and they were forgettable. Wait, yeah. like, did you say con like, duck? Is that what you said? Con yeah. duck? Yeah. I thought that. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. That was another thing, too. Like, they, they crammed in Inner Gang in there where, like, we'd never heard of Inner Gang until this moment, you know, as far as the movies go. And it, and it's like, ah. And Eternium. Yeah. Yeah. Eternium? I was yeah. like, really? 
turn you. Yeah. Okay. By the power of Grayskull. Yeah, I know. Just I know. Know. No, totally. Like it makes me think of He Man. Totally. Yeah. I was like, obtaining. I was gonna say unobtaining. Yeah. Didn't you it's know? It's like you guys are just salty. You don't have vibranium. vibranium. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> Rough. Or adamantium. So did did uh, Henry Cavill look digitized to you guys? Because I swear his lip looked a little digitized in Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he still had a beard. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention anymore that at that point. Was like I was saying before. That is the most useless and worthless throwaway cameo of all time. You want yep. Superman yeah. to be in your movie for a second? Great. You paid this guy whatever to get him to come back once. Uh, and the fact yeah. that everybody keeps and blaming he, James Gunn and other people for Cavill really—it's like yeah, he didn't want to do it anymore. Like, leave the guy alone. Obviously, War, he Hi- Warhammer is his shit. So, <laughs> well, he wants to do Warhammer. Let the guy do his passion project. Well, that, listen. You know, honestly, it's like it's like you always hope that the end justifies the means. And mm-hmm. if anything, he's such a Warhammer fan. I'm so glad that this at least ended oh, yeah. out in his favor for that. Yeah. For him to be able to executive produce and be in this movie in, in this you know this series, like it's it, it's it's going to mean a lot for him for him to see his passion. I mean, the dude built a computer just so he could play the game. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. there is a moment that could have improved the very end of the cameo. Had he done his like Mission Impossible like knuckle like fist reload as Superman, like yeah, bring it, Black Adam. I think I would have been like, all right, I can, I can see this. <laughs> I can get behind this. Movie, I can watch him do that <laughs> fist reload thing all day long. Right? That's that's a except great for thing. then that in the top of your head is that contract Black Adam can't lose now. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have to lose. You just threaten him. You know, just you know. Just threaten him. That's the part I hate. I hate. I absolutely do not like this in a story. Whenever the the story is, oh, he has to be the one to to defeat it because he's the only one who could do it. I'm like, really? oh wow, that's that's yeah. that's what we're going with. Because but it he took has two to people. It wasn't just him. If it weren't for Hawkman, exactly. they would have lost anyway. Oh so. yeah, that's the thing. Especially in like a world of superheroes, you like. Black Adam's the only one that can. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's one thing if the prophecy it... says and it's like written in fate and you can't sure. get away from right. it. That's fine. And but there's... otherwise, did, yeah. did did anyone else have a problem with the fact that Hawkman touched Doctor Fate's helmet and he wasn't yeah. faced by it? Yeah. Like that. That kind of bothered it me. It made it sound the way he said the line. It made it sound like he'd been teaching him for years. Well, the the thing the thing I yeah, that, yeah, took away was <laughs> the thing I took away from it that made me okay with it was like. Um, they had explained it earlier where Cyclone and Asmash were talking about the helmet and saying that it calls to, yeah, you know, a user. It allows certain people to touch it and use it. So that's how I justified it. it was like Hawkman's been around the helmet for so long anyway, and so the helmet kind of trusted. Yeah, yeah but it, was like the thing is, like, mind, even the but... wielders, even the wielders of the helmet don't always go unscathed. Like it. Oh it yeah. It does take yeah, a, yeah. it does take a mental and physical toll on whoever's using right. it. Right. So we're going to really get a, didn't play into that. We're going to get a Dr. Yeah, Hawk man true. fate or Dr. Hawk <laughs> fate man. Yeah, Dr. Hawk fate. Oh no, it it, it liquid metal away and then like disappeared. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah. man, we could have had a Dr. Hate Hawk fate man. That would yeah. have been great. <laughs> and was he a real doctor? Like what was he a doctor of? <laughs> He said, I'm not that kind of doctor. I know, but what kind? Is he like a physicist? Like, what is he? I would say. He he was like a podiatrist. (laughs) He's just just a skin doctor. Uh, A dermatologist. Or just a doctor of political science. You know, nothing serious. Just like, I got a degree in mystical art. I'm I'm an ophthalmologist. (laughs) That's how I can help you see the future. Uh, Not an MD. No. Man. Anyway. I think we've eviscerated this film enough, um, yeah. and we've kind of bagged on the rest of the DCEU a bit. Um, yeah, if you want DC, uh, if you want us to bag on DC, this is your show. If you want us to talk good about Marvel, <laughs> this is your show. We don't really hide it. And, um, and again, the disclaimer, like, it's not out of a want for this for these to succeed. Like, anytime that there's these movies, like, it's important that they that they have the opportunity to succeed, but it's if it is you the studio doesn't give it the respect that it deserves this is what happens and mm-hmm. they learn this with howard the duck you know they learn this with black adam i feel like they learned this a lot with like a lot of the dcu stuff and unfortunately they just didn't take the they could have course corrected a long time ago and never been in this position but 
you know which is crazy because marvel had already laid out the groundwork like you literally just had to copy marvel like they did it yeah. for you and but they, they don't want to do that because that'll be but the, this goes back let's go back it's let's like go back a little bit three act play red. don't do that don't do a three act fucking story that's fuck yeah that but screws red, up, you know paper vendetta right. you have you have the mm-hmm. losers the joker uh the batman these standalone films um, you go back to the Nolan, um, the Dark Knight series, like they do, they can do these comic book characters really well, and they don't have to follow mm-hmm. the source material that close. But when you get, when you, when you decide that you're going to build this interconnected world, they went, I don't know what, I, honestly, I'll be with you. I'll, I'll say it this, um, um, Zack Snyder and what's, what's his name? David Goyer. Um, David Goyer. Need to get out of the comic book industry, like David Goyer like, could stop writing. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no, because Simbus has a thing against Goyer. That's the whole thing. That's the only. Thing. So of course he's gonna say that because David Goyer was very much involved with Nolan's, uh, yeah, he was films. So uh, right, but Nolan was also counting. very involved in Nolan's films. That's 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 yeah. that's also like you you when you think about it. Like, also, without Goyer, we like, wouldn't have Blade. I was about to look that up. So, I think you're right. I'll yeah. trade, I'll trade without, that in. Without, like, let's mean. go back to the uh, let's go back to the Star Wars, the Star Wars special edition, and the prequels and stuff like that. Like um, George Lucas did the original trilogy, and then he did the special edition, and a lot of people blame him for doing the special edition and yeah. marking up the original source material. Um, you can be a great director and do some really great properties, but then also realize at some point enough's enough. And yeah. I really feel like, 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 yes, Goyer did a great job, but I think he had more, he had more oversight, let's say in the dark Knight, and like with blade and stuff like that. And yeah, I, I think, I think also Jeff Johns too, is someone that needs to not be involved because anything or Warner Brothers. Jeff Johns name. Yeah. On there. Wouldn't have been nice if Warner yeah, Brothers all... had sold DC to another company like Disney. I'm just saying that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if I look at David S. Goyer's last few movies that he screenplayed for Hellraiser, the new one, which we panned hard on this show, um, Call of Duty, whatever, uh, Terminator Dark Fate, which gets panned by everybody. Uh, and then, of course, Batman versus Superman. Wish we could go back in time and prevent that from existing. Godzilla, the 2014 <laughs> Man of Steel. That's part of the reason I hate it. Uh, and, and so on. I could I could literally trash that guy. Well, I kind of like Godzilla. I kind of like Godzilla. I like Godzilla. A I, I think my biggest problem with Godzilla is that the main character was always exactly where Godzilla was, and I don't like that. It that is no also sense. true. It made no sense to me. Always, <laughs> like always there. Like, <laughs> like, like, like if you if you put Elizabeth Olsen and what uh, <laughs> Jonathan, whatever it was, yeah, yeah, like, like, like when they hired them, it would have been nice if they would have said, "Hey, listen, we're brother and sister in another movie, and it might be really weird for people to see us married and do it, like going at it." Like we, you, it was. It bothered me. Unless you're, me like, unless you're in Alabama or something, and you're like, "Woo, sweet home." <laughs> like, but, but, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, and then I was like, "Oh, well, at least we have Walter White." And then, you know, yeah, no. See, right, they right. advertised the hell out of him. Then, that oh, that yeah, movie yeah, would yeah. have been sued in modern times for yeah. false advertising yeah. for Brian Cranston. Uh, oh, I was expecting a Brian Cranston Godzilla duel. Like I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> and then no. And, and Godzilla's like hopped up on meth. Something I I would have enjoyed it. Um, those movies, I think the the Godzilla movies. If you just cut all the human parts out, those movies are solid. Really. Except for Ken Watanabe. Yeah. Oh, Ken Watanabe. That, that oh, yeah. scene. Yeah. I'm yeah. give you that. Yeah, yeah. That guy okay. kicks ass. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> that said, we need to rate Black Adam because we haven't done that yet. So why don't we go back to Mr. Marvelite, our special guest for this evening? What do you rate? Black I, I believe we always go in the order of whoever did the initial review first. That would go to Tyler. Oh, well, I mean, you know, I kind of wing it these it. days. So go ahead. Dropping it on him. <laughs> um, I'm going to set the bar with a solid uh, three for me. Ooh. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> if it was the enjoyable, lowest ratings on this show did. ever, by the way. Oh, is it? Yeah. So. Okay, two. Yeah. Two now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gonna set that bar low. Beaten. It's a three. I think it's like I really wanted it. Like what you know, Mr. Marvel was saying. It's that's the thing is people don't understand that I wanted it to do good. I gave it a chance. Okay. Like I really wish it did better. Um, I think just like the hype with even the actors talking about it and like all the hype surrounding the movie. They're like, it's gonna be this. He's an antihero, and then you know he wasn't because his contract and you know the story is 
not so good and you know so yeah this is a three for me all right all right what about kid you you saw this when you were 12 um <laughs> i feel like i give it a high rating but like i would i would build a time machine now go back and let him know that <laughs> it's not worth it <laughs> it's a three kid know it it's a three kid <laughs> just watch Howard the duck kid don't yeah, yeah. It's a higher watch rating this film. one uh, who was next, Mr. Marvelite? I don't remember. Uh, it was me, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, so studio involvement, uh, a really unrealistic contract for a superhero character. Um, you've got really throwaway CGI characters that are, I mean, the villains are unmemorable. Um, the CGI is over the top. And we talk about the MCU's in shambles because of all the Marvel CGI. <laughs> this movie spent way too much money and still didn't look good like it just yeah. didn't it, it, it i mean it, it it tried to be pixelated i think at points and it just didn't do anything for me there um the the writing was terrible and the fact that that the majority of the part of the reason why this this film could not recover its money because of marketing is because they decided to make light up lanyards at at at, at hall age at san diego <laughs> comic-con where where the rock stood in front of a screen that had lightning and the majority of the people who were on the sides didn't see anything that looked good like like there is oh weird there like like they just i i feel like this was if rock really had this the star power to really put butts in seats and and everything else it it should have done better and it didn't do better and honestly after watching this film i have no idea why matt ramos got up in his seat and started screaming in the, in the theater like I just I don't understand. Even seeing Superman, it wasn't exciting. Like it just it was very lackluster. And I again I love comic book movies, and I will never watch this again. And it's a two for me. Mm. Oh, and, two. and I'm being yeah. generous. I'm being generous. All right. So because, the bar is a two now. That's where we're at. Yes, because I liked the drone that Amanda Waller came in better than pretty much everything else. In the uh-huh. world. And and what about Kid and You? Kid what about Twelve You? I wouldn't have liked this as a kid. Like I, I feel like it had like elements that would have gotten me to watch it, but then I would have been like, "What am I watching?" Because I wouldn't have had the attention span to follow where they were going because they were all over the place. <laughs> like I was sitting there, like as an adult, I'm sitting there, like, "When is the when is the guy going to come back to life? When is he going to come back to life?" And then of course mm-hmm. he doesn't come back to life. He just becomes a demon somewhere else, and and the body is just like it. Just none of it made sense. Mm-hmm. Like none, like. Like it, it, yeah. I I would have watched it, but I would I wouldn't have liked it, and I probably I can't rate it as a kid because I would have been like, this is this makes no sense whatsoever. It's a negative. <laughs> I don't even know how to rate it. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm it makes you. me an adult me want to rate it lower. But I, I I yeah, I wanted I wanted to give this a bit of a doubt, but I could. That's fair. That's fair. So was it Mickey next? I think. Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. Sure. Let's just go. With it. All right, I'm gonna go three and a half. For the Justice Society, because <laughs> I thought they were great, especially Cyclone and Doctor Fate. And Hawkman. Yeah, um, man, yeah. Now, as kid me, I probably would have been fooled by all of the bells and whistles. It might have got me like a six or seven. You know, mm-hmm. I would have probably found a way to enjoy it, but I would have been like, you know, I'd rather watch Howard the Duck. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How about you? All the movie things. Uh, I'm gonna go with like a four or four and a half. Um, yeah, like for me, the the JSA that's in there like really adds something to it for me. Like I would much rather just see a JSA movie, you know, mm-hmm. than than, any, than anything. And like, and actually, like Black Adam is just like, you know, the a piece of it maybe that they're trying to like, you know, get. And we would have seen more JSA, but. Um, yeah, and like twelve year old me, I probably, I probably would have dug this, you know. Um, when it like tore it apart too much, but um, kind of like what Mickey said, I probably would have been like a six or a seven, something like that. That's fair. Uh, I'm gonna give it a three, um, mostly because I I really can't give anything a one and feel good about it. Um, in in like <laughs> I mean, guess I'm they're sure there are exceptions, but work was put in. It was a movie. I watched it. Um, <laughs> Q, 
kid me, I, I probably would have loved this. You know, I, if I loved Howard the Duck when I was a kid, how would I have not loved this? You know, All right. it, it would have been amazing. And it tells me something. It says something to me about the fact that this movie was not made for us. It just wasn't. It was made for 12-year-olds um, in a yeah. lot of ways. It was the main, one of the main characters is a kid. And I, they do a good job with that in movies, you know, by, especially comic book movies, by adding kids into them. Um, but sometimes, you know, with like Iron Man 3, you can at least feel the adult side of it and enjoy it as an adult, mm-hmm. even though it's definitely targeted at kids with a kid in it. Uh, but that kid was sassy, like, you know, like Robert Downey was. So it, it worked. Yeah. This movie, we didn't get that. Like, the kid didn't walk around all, you know, with the eye up. <laughs> that might have been better. You know, he was a badass, like, like his idol or whatever. Um, one thing I didn't mention, and then this is going to have to wrap it up uh, bef- before I give my uh, full kid rating, which I think would have been probably an eight. I probably would have really dug this because it was a superhero movie, whatever. But they did say that the nth metal plane was indestructible and then it d- got destroyed, right? <laughs> that did happen, yeah. right? That did happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was odd to me that you made a point of pointing out that this was indestructible. Was it to tell me? Demon Boy was that strong or something? I, I, I don't know. I maybe. guess maybe. Which but. kids, this is what you need to remember That's when you write a script. Incredible. Make sure you proofread it. Right. And have yeah. somebody else read it and see if they think it's good before you send it to the studio. Uh, well, let's it's... face it. Even the plot armor was weak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It had plot armor, too. It just couldn't. Just... Didn't oh, do yeah. anything <laughs> with it. Anyway, uh, this has also been... The, also, oh. the, the rock's head... The rock's head on his, like, past body. <laughs> on the... <laughs> That wasn't man. <laughs> it was worse than Steve Rogers, you know, when he was little scrawny Steve Rogers. Um, yeah, I which mean, is still yeah. unbelievable at this point. But yeah, pretty bad. Don't watch this movie. I think is what we're telling you. Uh, I think that's what we're saying. Or if, you know, I, listen. If you hate yourself, watch it. Yeah, I wouldn't have watched it if it wasn't for this. Like I had no plans at all to watch it. <laughs> that was part of the reason I doubled down. I was like, Mickey's got to watch. Go. We got to force him to watch. Yeah, just, sure. just uh, do me a favor. If you guys ever review the Flash movie, please don't invite me to that one. Uh, I'm actually, well, I'm I not don't, watching yeah, that. Thing. I don't think I'm. All yeah. I know is the next superhero movie we will be reviewing will be Wakanda Forever. We're also going to re- uh, review um, the Woman King uh, on that same night, and then Girls Trip will be the like kind of levity uh, for the evening. Kind of give us a little, a little nice moment of reprieve over all the seriousness Mm -hmm. um again next week will be an all foodie weekend or week weekend uh so get hungry watch movies uh and join us next week for an all food conversation uh that said this has been episode 14 of season two of real study and we uh thank you for all being here and we will see you next week when we come quack come (laughs) no walk yourself out of here man we're gonna go now before he hurts himself you guys have a great night (laughs) What the...